welcome to New Game Who Dis. Tonight is a special night because it's the finale of RuneQuest and final episodes are always sad unless it's The Walking Dead, which will be a joy because that show is terrible. It's just terrible and people should celebrate when they finally take that horrible show off the air. <laughs> Matthew, your thoughts. Important question. Are you still watching? <laughs> no, I got to see what I, and I'm OCD. Like I have I mean, to finish watching shows and I finally pulled myself out of it a few seasons ago, but it just angers me that they're still going on with that I wanna, show. I want to compliment you on taking a healthy step in your life and stop. You, you don't have to watch it when you don't like something. So you can just watch other oh, things. I'm the same way with books. If you start reading a book, I have to finish it. Is anyone else like that? Or are they like, I can put a book away if I don't like it. I can't do it. I can't do it. Mm, my ADHD me. prohibits me yeah, yeah. See? from doing such I a thing. I feel a lot of guilt if I do that. <laughs> you feel guilt towards this yeah. paper. Is it towards the author or is it towards the physical book? Towards like my, I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know. Maybe I won't feel guilty anymore because I'm like, who am I? <laughs> <laughs> who is, where is this guilt being I'm placed? I'm not going to get threats from the publishing company. Right. Like they're not going to throw a brick through my window. <laughs> How dare you? There's a brick that says Penguin Press. On it. With, the, with the copy of the book <laughs> taped to it. Read it! <laughs> no, no, I just throw it out. Tanya, do you have this problem or can you just gladly walk away from a book? It depends because if it's a book by someone I know, then I feel really bad because I know at some point they may ask me how, what I think of the book. Ah, see, I've and never read anything by anyone I know. Wow. Okay, then. <laughs> I don't have any, any author friends. I thought you could say, I'm, an, I'm making a blanket policy. Actually, Troy, you've never read anything I've written. That's you've right, turned yeah. down numerous opportunities to come see my work. And uh, <laughs> I'm very busy. If you ever handed me a manuscript, I'm sure I would hire Not someone read to read it. it and give me the... Uh, <laughs> What is it called wow. when you get the notes? The, uh, the coverage. The coverage, notes. yes. Oh, I'd read the coverage. Yeah. I promise you I'd read the coverage. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, I guess I just don't hang out in the right circles. I don't have author friends. Besides I, Matthew. You mm. have like 10 of them. They're all upset at you right now. You yeah, just yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you read it. You said it was great. I sent you my manuscript months ago. I've God. been talking to you about my writing for years. I just so answered just like gonna start zzz, 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 we're gonna hear it. <laughs> this afternoon I went into my Twitter messages and I answered three that have just been sitting there for four months. I felt so bad. <laughs> and I started them all like, Oh, I'm so sorry. I need an assistant. I'm so sorry. So, so are Mom. you like T Pain with his Instagram messages? This T was that what T Pain does? Oh, he made a whole thing about how he'd been ignoring Instagram messages for years. Mm -hmm. That's what they always, they call me the T-Pain of uh, RPG gaming. I get that a lot. And it's because- That's what the T and Troy stands for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the T, T-Pain. The T-Pain of RPGs. Good Lord. Um, what were we talking about? Reading. Books. I got nothing. The finale. The last rune quest. We made it. What a long, strange journey it's been. Let me ask you this. This game was new to everyone except Nora, right? Nora, you play I, a little bit of it? I played it once yeah. before, yeah. Was it this edition that you played or you played an older edition? Yeah, it was this edition, yeah. What is, because uh, I feel like this game, it, while there are similarities, like Strike Rank is just initiative kind of where you just get a, a new initiative each round based on what you're doing, which I actually, now that I've started to wrap my head around it, I really like. Are there any things that have jumped out at you that are like, this is a really cool concept I'd like to see in other games? I like the fact that you can parry or dodge in an attack. Uh, a lot of the a lot of the uh, the battle mechanics. I guess I like the fact that you could hit a certain specific area. That kind of make makes things kind of interesting in the storytelling. Um, I like the fact that you could be you know a smashing bastard, but also be a magic caster. Like there's magic for everybody, and there's mm -hmm. you know you mm -hmm. can also be super strong at the same time. Yeah, there's a lot of um, customization. I, well, I said in the first stream that there aren't classes per se. There's so much stuff. It really allows you, if you're into the crunch, to get, create a, a completely different character from the person sitting next to you because there's so many options for customization. Yeah. Matthew, and what do you like? if you're into backstory... 
Oh, man. It's all there. Uh, yeah, the world. I haven't even dug into in the starter set that's going to come out soon. And by the way, if you're interested in the starter set, uh, Chaosium has put out a uh, mailing list that you can sign up for and you'll be notified immediately uh, when the starter set releases. Brennan will throw that link in the chat. The starter set that comes out, it comes out with the solo quest that I talked about in the first stream. It comes out with this adventure we're playing. Obviously, I've made some changes and you guys have done stuff that have allowed me to, to make some alterations. But there's three other adventures uh then there's the rules and then there's a whole book just on the setting um so if you are like i said this maybe last week if you like a lot of lore if you like a lot of setting this is the system for you matthew you like when we play pathfinder you're really into the galarian lore do you think that this is something you could sink your teeth into that's what i was gonna say i mean i never play anything remotely like the, a bronze age setting so this that was really i mean i didn't really get i only got into it in the briefest of ways for this sure. stream. Uh, but that seems like a real interesting avenue for this particular game. And I'll, I'll second everything Nora was saying too. Like the, it feels like in other RPGs, if you want to go after like the leg, you want to, if you want to sweep the leg or something, you know, you got, that's usually you have to, it's, it, you need to be very high level and have all kinds of different special mechanics for it. And then it's kind of like, you're giving up attacks to do it. But I, I love that. Like you actually can strategize about how, how to hit people, which Seems like an important part of this game. Yeah, you can leave it up to random chance or roll a d20 to see where you hit, or you can aim and just act on strike rank 12, uh, yeah. as long as you didn't move to like, I need to go after the chest, we need to take this thing out. Uh, but as you'll see in this uh, combat that we're going to jump into today, even the enemies have different things about them. Like, oh, I, I did such and such. Isn't such and such supposed to happen? Well, no, because this enemy has a unique thing about them. Uh, we'll get into that. Uh, Connie, anything jumping out to you uh, with this system that you're like, hmm, I could get into that? I'm actually a really big fan of using passions and runes to augment your skills on yeah. rolls. I mm. actually really like that part. Like I, that was the part that I like, I think I like the most uh, based on our playthrough so far. Cause I had a lot of fun, like reverse justifying, like looking at my passions, like, all right, how can my hate for the lunar empire augment my dance skill right now? <laughs> or like something like that. Like that's, there's something about that that feels fun to me and very synergistic. Like, um, role playing in the fun funnest way where role is like rolling a die uh as opposed to like actually embodying a role uh, which i don't necessarily mind um yeah. i am also a fan of the hit locations i thought i wouldn't be but i actually really like it um and like the the tables there's mm -hmm. something about like you know the uh the result table uh, for skill checks and also for like uh, attack and parry results, right? It's like a one, two, three, four, five. It's like a five by five table with like 25 different results based on what the attacker and the defender roll. And something about that feels like fun. I don't know. Like, I don't mind it. As long as I have like it pulled up, it like yeah. actually is really fun for the flow of combat for me. Yeah, I love a good table. I never met a table I didn't like. And uh, this yeah. game has got plenty of tables. And we're really going to dig in the, into them today because that first combat with the us, with the Dark Trolls, like they were just kind of manhandling you. We didn't do a lot of what Nora was talking about, the fight back and the dodge. And that's going to come into play here. And you're going to see that the sort of moment to moment interaction of combat, it feels a lot more uh, realistic. But because of that, I think it's a lot more dangerous as well. Uh, Tanya, you're a, you're, you're a big game developer as well are there things in here that are you the type of person like as you're playing new games you're like oh yeah that's going in my next game is something about to jump out of you um i like the percentage options because mm -hmm. um you know Nora and i are on black dice and, and that's a d20 system most people know and start with uh cortex is a dice pool which is a lot different so i like the i like the percentile die but i'd probably change a little bit because it feels like there's such a big gap of like you could utterly fail or utterly succeed depending on what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And I mean, as we saw last time, I got two 100s in the same session. So <laughs> I don't know, but that's always up to the dice. So or the I gods. Feel, or, the, or the dice gods. <laughs> the dice gods, yeah. Yes, yeah, so I like it. I would probably modify like a combination of percentile and dice pool for something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I could see that. Um, yeah, this is a system I think 
that the more I would would dig into it, the more I would discover the things that I'm like a little iffy about. I think if I understood it more, I'd be like, oh no, this is uh, this makes a lot more sense. So I think I have a lot of apprehension with my excitement tonight because there's just so much to this, uh, even this first combat that we're going to jump into. Um, but before we do, I just want to talk about a couple things. Uh, the room I mentioned, the uh, if you're interested in getting the starter set, which I highly recommend if you enjoyed these streams, uh, sign up for that uh, mailing list so you find out immediately when it goes on sale. Uh, but in the meantime, if you're like, you know what, I'm in, I don't even need the starter set, you can buy uh, the RuneQuest uh, Core Rule Book, and Brennan will throw that link in the chat as well. It's a beautiful book. The blue guy, remember blue guy from last week? He really sold the cover for me. I want to I wanna know more about this blue guy. Uh, so jump on that. And also, you can use uh, the code RuneCanon all month uh, at Chaosium.com to get a little percentage off your order. So check that out. And then one last thing before we jump into this combat. Uh, this is going to be a very combat-heavy finale. Uh, next week, next week's new game, Who Dis? We are ending RuneQuest, and we are jumping into a new game, and your old buddy Troy is going to get a few weeks off, because next week, our good friend Joe O'Brien is going to be the, uh, the game master for Twilight 2000. That's right, Twilight 2000. And look at this cast. Our own mustachioed Grant Berger is going to be there, along with everyone's favorite, Kate Stamas, our good buddy Skid Marr, and making his new game who dis debut, Ross Bryant from the stream of Blood and from our new D&D 5e show, Wicked Empire. Maybe you've seen Ross uh, doing a little Blood and Blades with Joe O'Brien, Jared Logan, and I playing little Blades in the Dark. Ross is the best. That is going to be must-watch television, but I won't watch because I'm going to enjoy the time off. Uh, Grant, are you excited about Twilight 2000? Very excited to be entering into kind of a post-apocalyptic Eastern Europe European type of uh, warfare area should be bleak, you know, dystopian, nothing like today. Uh, but what I'm <laughs> upset about is the fact that we didn't have budget to get me new mustachioed headshots. I'm, I'm sorry. having to clone stamp in this mustache on top of the old picture <laughs> and it just looks a mess. Okay. All right. Yes. I've, I've aired my grievances. I, well, I appreciate it. Yes. No, we, we finally got headshots after six years in business. I, we can't spring for fresh shots every time you decide <laughs> to do that to your face. Uh, well, I'm excited. Be sure to check that out. Three weeks of Twilight 2000. Amazing cast. I'm excited and you should be as well. But let's talk about rune quests because you all got yourselves into a bit of a situation last week at least you're not in jail you got out of jail because you very selflessly decided to speak for the us who are having trouble communicating their situation that they had basically come here to help defend the city to work for this guy during the uh, the attack on johnstown and their patron died in the battle and so no one was left to pay him he didn't have any family and so they were getting wasted and causing a ruckus in town in the hope that like the guard would just pay them to leave it was a weird it was a weird plan uh but they couldn't communicate that so there was this one guy who was in charge of the marcus that was like it's just 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 execute them take all their money and execute them and you spoke up for them after speaking to them in the jail and explained their situation and the city wrecks seemed like to seem like a level-headed guy was like okay let them go you all seem pretty cool would you be interested in a job uh if you help me out with this maybe it could lead to further jobs and your adventurers your mercenaries your soldiers of fortune and so you take them up on this opportunity you go meet uh the representative of the of the uh, milani tribe in town and he explains to you that they have these lands outside of johnstown uh that are several farmers work on and these farmers are supposed to come to the market every couple of days to uh sell their wares but also to give tithes and tribute to their tribe and they haven't been around in a week which is strange not that strange but he sent a messenger out yesterday a young boy and the messenger never returned the normal guy that's in charge uh saros tip prince killer he's up north uh, kind of gathering the troops just in case the lunar empire comes back so they need someone to go check this out so you guys go you get there and it's vacant there are no farmers there. There are no people there. Doors appear to be bashed in on the four farmhouses that you can see. 
You explore one and you see this, this, no one really there. It looks like maybe signs of a struggle. You find blood stains everywhere. You also find these pits that look like purposely uh, dug out tunnels. You see little spikes in the ground that you now think, oh, I know what that is. Probably a scorpion's tail. You also smelled acid in the air, an acid smell. You think poison, and you're like, oh, probably a scorpion's tail does poison because when you finally go to the basement of an old temple that has been converted into a farm slash commune, you find a half-devoured body, and then one of these giant scorpion man creatures comes crawling on the upper part of the tower, drops down, broadsword in hand, and it's a fight. Let's get into it. Hop over to roll 20, and let's see what we see here. I'm nervous. I'm excited, but I'm also nervous for you guys. I'm nervous for myself that I won't know the rules, but I'm nervous for you guys that you might just die, and this will be a really short stream. Uh, but there's this guy again. <laughs> look at him. Oh, oh what a handsome uh, fella. Uh, he's no. huge. Look at a no, face. Thank you. Can I just also I'm, point out, in addition to the obvious terrifying things, he seems a little disgruntled, and I don't think that bodes well for us. Yeah, he doesn't look particularly happy at his lot What does he need a life. shield for? He's got that <laughs> tail and all those arms. Uh, well, I will tell you this. Uh, one, two, three, four, eight legs, a tail, a thorax, a chest, a head. He has 14 hit locations, this character. <laughs> Great. Four Thanks, Troy. Teen hit locations. <laughs> wow. uh, this is going to be really interesting because, in addition to this stinger, he's got a broadsword in his non shielded hand. Let's get down to it. We spoke about this a couple weeks ago Strike Rank. It replaces mm. the, the traditional idea of initiative. And Strike Rank is just, it can change from round to round depending on what you want to do. Rune spells always act on strike rank one unless you um, add to them with uh, magic points. If you boost them, then you, the first magic point is free. Everyone after that increases your strike rank. Anytime you have to move, every box you move towards an enemy or wherever you're moving adds one to your strike rank. Otherwise, whatever you're using uh, determines your strike rank. And your character sheets are really good at spelling out what the basic strike rank for things are. So if I look over at Varakos Wolf Killer, for example, if Varakos is using a broadsword, that acts on strike rank six. But if you had to move us two spaces to get there, then you wouldn't be able to swing that till strike rank eight. Now, speaking of Varakos, last week you were talking about casting Blade Sharp, and we weren't sure what the mm -hmm. duration is. I looked into it a little bit, and it seems like the standard duration for spells is two minutes, which would be about ten rounds of combat. But I'm thinking that you, like, seasoned battle veteran, you cast this right before you went downstairs. Definitely. Uh, 100%. The, yeah, you're, you're ready to go, so you're going to get the benefits of that, and uh, you're going to need it. Um, so let's just take our time, walk through this, and see what happens. Look at the size of this thing. comes barreling down the tunnel. Here, I'll move it back to right at the edge there. Let me reveal a little more of the map here so you can see the, uh, the tunnel action. Everybody loves a little tunnel action. Mm. There he is. Handsome fella. Uh, Half-eaten corpse. Makarios, Vasana, Varakos, and Arando. What is everyone's <laughs> intention here? Let's start with uh, Makarios. Uh, Makarios uh, <clears throat> uh, ten, uh, intends to flee in terror. Okay. <laughs> uh, and then maybe do some other stuff too. Cast okay. a spell, perhaps. All right. So you're you are thinking of getting out, getting away from this, but yes. casting a spell at some point in that. Yes. Flight. Uh, okay. Uh, Vasana, what are your intentions? So the I'm guessing the dude has seen us, and this is like not a point of hide, and maybe he'll go away. So I'm going to just say, you know what, f it, and I'm going to hurl a lance at him. I got a lance. You got a lance. It's long. You're just gonna chuck just gonna a lance at him. Yes. Okay, I like that. Uh, all right, so that's Vasana's plan. Makarios, <laughs> flee in terror. Uh, Vasana, throw a lance. Uh, what about Varakos? I'm going to run up to this dude and uh, hack at him with my broadsword. 
You sure are. Uh, I, I, I hope you hit and do a lot of damage. It'll make my life a lot easier. Uh, what about Aranda? Aranda had a tough go last week, but this is no longer knowledge checks. This is the heat of battle. Yeah, I am. Um, I'm actually a little torn between trying to demoralize our enemy mm. or using Berserker on myself. Ooh. Ooh. Mm. Yeah. The second one sounds really cool. I know. But you do, you. Yes, it does. You know what? We, I'm just going to full on rage. We're going Berserker. That's yes. So, that is awesome. Hell yeah, we need uh, it. <laughs> I want to hear about that when it comes around to your strike rank, uh, what that means mechanically. All right, so let's, uh, I'll, tr- I'll put on my auctioneer hat here for a second and go through uh, the strike ranks. So is anyone acting on strike rank one? Macarius, you st- talked about doing magic. Were you thinking rune magic or spirit no. magic? Spirit magic. Okay, so when when would that take place based on what you're trying to do? Well, I'll pull back the curtain a little bit and say that the magic is going to come from the more level-headed uh, companion, Whisper the Snake. Whisper the Snake. Who can forget Whispers. Whisper? Don't forget Whisper, and Whisper is the one who intends to cast a spell. Makarios intends to flee in terror. I see. Okay. All right. So you're going to leave Whisper behind. And, no, no. Uh, Whisper can cast from range. Oh, can cast from range. Okay, perfect. Uh, let me see if I act on strike rank one. Uh, I do not. Okay, anybody acting on strike rank two, three, four? Uh, yes, movement, uh, right? Four? Uh, yeah, because I think I'd need to be, because I'm moving four squares, I'm assuming, to get up on this guy. If I can, like, move, t- like, that's one square, two squares, three, four. I'm assuming that's strike rank four. So, what? but then you add to that what your weapon is. So what is your weapon f- uh, that oh, you're using? Oh, sure. Okay, okay, yeah. Broadsword, so that's strike rank six. So all okay. of that happens on strike rank 10? Yeah, so all of that happens okay, on strike it, rank it, 10. It, it's kind of Understood. cool the way this works is because now next round you'll be right next to uh, the scorpion guy and you'll act on strike rank uh, six instead of 10. But you had to spend time Got to get it. up to him. Understood. Uh, this okay. round, okay. yeah. Uh, um, and if you do anything else, like if you're switching from a weapon to a spell or from a spell to a weapon, that adds to your strength rank as well. Um, there's a little chart that has all of those things. We're going to play a little fast and loose. If you're a rune quest purist, I apologize. We're learning. Stop yelling at me. I'm writing angry things on my YouTube videos. Um, <laughs> are, I'm not anyone- quite sure where rune magic will fall. Rune magic always happens on strike rank one. So we we can go back because no one has has acted. So rune magic will happen on strike rank one. Is this your berserker situation? Yes. Yes. Talk to me about berserker. Target goes berserk for getting all but the need to kill their enemies. It cannot be cast on someone under the fanaticism spell and spells do not combine. Berserker has the following effects. Increases the target, increases the target attack skill rating with hand weapons by half. It should probably Hmm. be decreased. Um, oh, target is me. Never mind. Increase con by half. So my, my con goes up by another seven points. Ooh, that'll actually come in handy because, spoiler alert, if this thing hits you with its poison, it's yeah. a uh, resistance roll, potency versus con. Um, I get two points of counter magic. Protection from incapacitation, shock, unconsciousness, or exhaustion. Awesome. If subject to these, they take effect when the spell is expired. All con rolls succeed unless you roll a crit fail, which is 96 to 100. Really? All con wow. rolls, yep, succeed. Did you uh, read this adventure beforehand, Tanya? Because no. I frown upon that. <laughs> no, because I don't even own Rune Quest, so no. Um, Got me. Against Chaos, having the Chaos Rune from ca- or from Chaotic Origins, attack rating is doubled in Counter Magic's increased score. A Berserker cannot cast Magic, Dodge, or Parry while under this effect. And if I choose to shake free, I have to roll an int times one or meditate successfully. A Shalana Arroyo initiated initiate can bring them out of Berserk Fury with a charisma times five roll. The spell expires, Berserkers incapacitate as if they have fallen into a deep sleep. They may be woken by normal me. So basically, I'm gonna like go all in and then just collapse. I am an I am a Shalana Arroy initiate. So I could feasibly bring you out of it. Oh, that Huzzah. is cool. Mm. So it's kind of like you know my I always my analog or is comparison is always Pathfinder, and when a mm. when a barbarian rages, they're fatigued afterwards, and so this is like a step up. You're exhausted, and you collapse, unless a very specific worshiper of this deity comes <laughs> and calms you down. That's really cool. 
Um, now, let me ask you this. This is one thing I'm not super sure about, so I'm going to keep it a little fluid in the way we do it. Mm. That's only That was act of, happened on Strike Rank 1, but if Correct. you want to then attack, what weapon are you using? I'd be using my two-handed battle axe, which is Strike Rank 6. All right, so I'm going to say you can still do that, and that'll happen on Strike Rank 7. We'll just okay. have the rune magic occur, and when you cast rune magic, it's just like the flames started igniting around you. The red-hot flames are just, uh-oh, Aranda's in a rage, and then on Strike Rank 7, uh, unless you have to move up to it, uh, I don't know where you are. In which case, it'll say, add. Um, uh, I might one, have one, two, three, four. All right, so on strike rank eleven, you can get right next to it okay. uh, and start wailing. Okay. I just realized okay. Macarius is the one that's going to get hit by this guy if he acts first. Okay, well, could I, Troy? If it, if we can do rune magic on the on mm-hmm. first strike rank, can I just cast shield on myself real quick? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Can I also right. do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's smart. And then just add one to whatever you're trying to do. Um, just taking okay. into account that movement adds one as well. You okay. know, that's that's really, really smart. They even say in the, the rules uh, something to the effect of like, don't sleep on combat. It is very, very dangerous in this game. And you need to spend time like your first round should be like, oh, here it is, surviving combat. Always prepare for, for a, before a melee. Cast defensive and weapon, weapon enhancing spells before combat if possible. Uh, armor saves lives. Even light armor can greatly increase the chance of survival. Defensive magic is e- equally useful. Casting three points of the shield spell is the equivalent of wearing heavy armor. So, you know, it, it's it's smart to do this. Normally, you're like, oh, I got the high initiative. In this case, I've got an early strike rank. I'm just going to go and attack. But then this guy is going to wail on you and you're going to take the brunt of it. So it's just a, a new way of thinking about combat. So that's smart. Let's keep rocking and rolling here to okay. strike rank four or five. Macarios okay. will go on five. Oh, you <laughs> lucky you're going on five. Uh, let me just make sure. Okay, this is interesting. So my guy. Okay, no, you go ahead. So I'm just going to move. That's all Macarios is going to do. He's going to move five squares. Okay. Move five squares. You're going to disengage. Uh, great. And then when is Whisper doing its spell? Uh, Whisper is going to act on strike rank six. Strike rank six. Okay. Let me ask you this. Was his spell something that... Um, this is something I'm not 100% sure of. Like, should then both those things happen on strike rank 11? I'm not 100 percent sure. I'm not I feel either. like Do you're, you're where you've separate... separated it. They have their own strike rank. I'm fine with letting it happen that way because I'm not 100 percent sure. But if you're watching and you're interested in learning about this game, this is something that I'm not sure about. Um, I'll try to look it up in between now and the next strike rank. Great. Um, <laughs> Okay, I'm just looking at what I can do. Wonderful. All right, let's move on to strike rank six or okay. s- Whisper acts on six. Great. Okay, so Whisper is going to uh, enact some spirit magic of his own. Okay. And cast a little spell called Befuddle. Ooh, so this befuddle. is going to be a, re- a, a resistance roll against your scorpion dude. Okay. Uh, power Great. versus power. I'm going to go to the resistance table, right? Love the resistance table. Uh, All right, so there's active characteristics on the top and passive characteristics on the bottom. So you need to tell me what um, Whisper's power is. Whisper's power is 10. Whisper's power is 10. He's just a snake, Troy. Well, He's a very compelling and very loving snake, but he's still just a snake. Well, here's the good news. The Power Man Marauder's power is only 7. So we look across the board here, and that is a 65 you've got to roll under. All right. Okay. 64. Oh! (gasps) Just made it. All right, so you successfully cast the spell. Uh, Make sure to cross off the magic points that that costs. And what is the result? The target is confused and can only defend until directly attacked. Wow. So if anyone wants to take a little longer and buff, he he can't do anything until you attack him. That's very important. So he basically will not attack you unless you attack him. So you could change your plans for this round and just self up. Totally up to you. Very cool. Okay, let's go to strike rank seven. I will move on strike rank seven. Okay. Um, since I need to, I'm, I'm acting on seven because I do need to move over one. 
because okay. a lance needs to be held. It's not like a spear where you could throw it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I will attack from here. All right. So let me get to my, uh, you know what? I'm going to say where he's confused. I'm not even going to attempt to dodge out of the way. I'm just going to let you throw and see if you hit. Um, so what is your skill in lance throwing? Or- so you don't throw it. It's like a very long, you just got like a jousting, like got to. Oh, so you're like lunging and stabbing. Mm -hmm, Yeah. Okay, great. What is Um, your skill in this? The percentage? Yeah. So I got to roll below a 70. Now, when you use passions, can you use those on weapon attacks or are they just for skills? Oh, no, you absolutely can. Just keep in mind that once you invoke that passion, it lasts for the uh, the whole combat. Okay. So I will use my hatred for the Lunar Empire. To yes. to increase my hopefully increase my chances, so I'll roll for that first, and I get I have to get below a ninety. Yes, you just encountered some uh, poisoned bodies of the Lunar Empire that Macarios mm-hmm. wanted to help, but Aranda was like, "No way, Jose!" and decapitated all of them. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and so I rolled a twenty-six, so I succeed on uh, on the passion roll. You sure do. Um, okay. What does that add again? Remind That'll me add twenty percent, where it was we'll just a 20%. regular success. So now I have to get below a 90 then for this attack. All right, stop bragging and tell me what you're it's, it's for. It's for the audience. So I'm, they're, they're here with us. A 90. All right, we so got to be eye to eye on what's going on. All right. So I, if you roll under an 18, you could be a special or a critical. 90 is very high. Now I did not. I'm so glad I succeeded on that because I rolled an 89. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so oh my God. These are. Just succeeded. Um, so then, uh, for the attack, it is a D10 plus one plus three D6. So let me roll that. All right. Well, here, first start wow. with hit location. So ah, give me a, let's do that first. We'll give me a D20 and tell me where you hit on this big Let's see. I rolled a, gun. a 19. Oh. So that is his head. That is his head. And actually, this guy has his own table of hit locations that's different from the standard because oh. he has 14 hit locations. So right hind head? leg, right third leg, right, et cetera, et cetera. Tail, thorax, chest. But you hit the head, which is the best place to hit. Yes! All right. So I'm the going lance. to roll with a lance, no less. This is huge. Okay. So let's see here. Back to my... This is great. Now, every hit location, if you remember from a couple weeks ago, audience and everyone sitting here, uh, every hit location has a, a certain armor rating and then a certain hit points for that location. So when you take damage, you subtract the armor points and you take damage from that location and from your total hit points. When your hit points reach zero, you're out of the fight, you're dying. When an adventurer's hit points hit two or one, they have X amount of rounds before they die, so they need healing. Uh, And then there's certain things that happen, like if you take an arm twice below its hit points or thrice below its hit points, you can cut it off like uh, Aranda did to uh, the giant troll in the first fight. How much damage did you roll against this guy's head? So as I swing this lance over my head once around and then just my mic was muted sorry about that uh, so as I as I swing this lance around my head once and then just stab right for his head it deals 21 points of damage wait does it really head. it does 21 points of damage yes what does that uh, do is he alright alright so <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Is he all right? <laughs> 21 points of damage? Yeah, because a, a, a lance does 1d10 plus 1 plus 3d6. All right, Ooh. so you guys come into this room. You come down. You see that all the stuff from all four farms has been collected in this room. There's there's coins. There's food. There's all sorts of stuff. And you see this half-devoured body. You start to walk towards it. All of a sudden, like uh, the director's cut of uh, The Exorcist, it comes down the stairs backwards like this. It came on the top of the tunnel, upside down, drops down. Everybody does their stuff. And Vasana just steps up and pierces this guy (laughs) through the head with her lance. And he dies on the spot. What? 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 100% died. Yeah, 100% dead. Holy Anyone like shit. scorpion man shish kebab? No. Holy I'm, I'm, cow. Wow. I'm, 
Well, I guess I'm, I'm not raging. <laughs> yeah. I'm suddenly a lot less angry. <laughs> I am so clapping. <laughs> wow. You know, it's just it, it the, the the amount of hit points that did took him below his total hit points, uh, as well as uh, eliminating all his head hit points. So you pierce straight through his skull, wow. and you are now out of combat. Wow. I just shout for the glory of Orleth and I just like rip my shirt off and it's <laughs> in Thunder glory. shakes. Yes. Uh, amazing. At that moment though, everybody roll a listen check. Oh no. Oh boy. Oh boy. Can I augment with devotion to uh, Vasana? <laughs> Yes, you now have a new skill, <laughs> devotion to Vasana. Um, I don't have listen anymore. Let's see, listen, listen. Um, yeah, it's possible you don't have listen if you have something equivalent, but this is really a, a sound-based check. Somebody should have. Um, uh, I'll try it. Yeah, I have it. But my scan is very low. I got uh, a success, 39 I, uh, I out of the 45. as well. Okay. Great. Ooh, uh, I just made a 36. Uh, wait, let me see. What about you, does, Now, does the passion thing work? You said it works for the whole duration of... Yeah, so you're you're out of combat now, so that your your passion has died down. I don't think it would augment your, your listening, per se. Got it. Okay, for this cool. Not moment. a problem. Yeah. Uh, it was just to do that <laughs> stab. Uh, so everyone's... Vasana is too busy uh, <laughs> uh, ripping her clothes off. Uh, the rest of you hear uh, the sound of a child screaming like a shriek from outside the building, it sounds like, coming from outside. Can we go through the tunnel we see now the scorpion man is dead? Yeah, so if you start to walk through the tunnel, you see about 10, 20 feet in or so, it branches off into several different tunnels. You think you could get lost down here for hours trying to figure where uh, this, uh, what, what's going on here. But the, the sound of the scream is coming back from outside. So you, do, you could go into the tunnels if you want. Oh, then I'm going to bolt for the, for the way we came for the kids screaming. Okay. Uh, Macarius. Um, uh, I will follow uh, the group. Yep, the same. Uh, Varakos is just out of there on Aranda's heels. <laughs> it, Feeling a little miffed that wasn't able to fight, but is very, very impressed by Vasana. I'm, I'm sure shocked. there will be opportunities. Yeah. The I'm shocked that you one shot killed that thing. <laughs> I know, that oh is, my god. Yeah, I it think seemed, that was my most scary. glorious battle moment in I think all of my R RPG gaming. Um, <laughs> is, this, is this tunnel, it's tunnels too small for Molon? Got to leave Molon behind, or can uh, I bring well, Molon? You, Molon's outside, so you can follow the sound and mount Molon and gallop off in the dirt distance of the sound at another yes, farm. Yes, that's what I'll do because I want to make sure I uh, bring him with me. Wait, yes. you just you just did that to the scorpion dude, and you didn't even have Molon with you? No, <laughs> <laughs> he was wow. chilling outside with the cows. <laughs> you don't even need Molon. <laughs> you can't ride a bison into a farmhouse. Uh, <laughs> All right, Ooh, so wait, before we leave, can I yeah. cut this thing's stinger off so we can have the poison just in case we need to make yes. like an antidote or something? Yes, Ooh. yes, you can. Um, okay. Macarius might be wise in these ways. Um, I'm sure Whisper has been devenomized. <laughs> Listen, don't talk about Whisper. Whisper just befuddled your scorpion guy. Just because <laughs> he's dead doesn't mean Whisper didn't contribute, all right? Do you think uh, devenomizing a snake is like declawing a cat? It's considered inhumane. I don't know, but it is for Whisper. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, would, I would think that that's, it's probably okay. Don't they like squeeze the venom out like they're milking a cow? I think there is a milking involved with it. There, I've, mm -hmm. I've seen you grab yeah. the snake, snakes like yeah. this. No. <laughs> no, no, no. It's like they press the head over like a glass yeah, or vial. Like a like jar. A petri yep. dish or something. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Do they yeah. Re <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I spend way too many times watching nature documentaries. Troy, I never want to see you do that. I can't yeah, stop. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just kind of like blocking Troy's square. No, 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 Get over here, you son of a gun. <laughs> right <into the> <laughs> it's so ridiculous. You sure that's not how it works? Anyways, so snakes have a finite amount of venom. Why are you asking me? <laughs> You're the snake master. Just for friend, I don't know. I don't know if you have a finite amount of venom, Troy. It's a, the same thing. I think Troy like has infinite period. venom. I think I have infinite venom. Thank you. Uh, 
All right, let's go back to this map of uh, Murnier's Landing, this beautiful uh, pastoral landscape that I shared with you last week. Um, you guys came in from the uh, b- 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 from the east, got to this crossroads, went up north, checked out this farm, went down south. Then you heard a sound down near the old temple. Now you're hearing a sound of screaming coming from this last building, way, way off uh, to the north. Um, Northwest. So you head in that direction. And this is the most traditional of all the farms that you can see. It's a high roofed farmhouse with a loft, uh, a couple of small uh, sheds for storage, a central well, two large piles of hay covered with thick linen tarps. Uh, and there's a few cattle grazing nearby uh, that, like the other ones, have apparently been spared by these, uh, these scorpion men. Um... Everybody give me a search roll as you approach. And a, and then a, another listen roll to try and find out the source of this sound. Because it sounds like it's coming from this direction, but you don't see any any little girl. Can I augment with my love for family? Absolutely. Perfect opportunity to augment. Uh, okay. I don't have search, but I got a success on my listen. Okay. I do augment, but I fail my search. Fail your search. Um. I failed search. I succeeded on listen. I also failed my listen. Terrible. Terrible. <laughs> I have neither. I could scan, but my scan is very low. Uh, that's all right. Nobody succeeded on the search, but we got two successes on the listen. It sounds like this cry uh, is coming from the tarps behind the shed near those hay bales. Mm. We make haste for the tarps. Come yes, along. we do. <laughs> you make haste for the tarps. Uh, you uh, pull the tarp back, presumably? Yes, definitely. Carefully. You yes. Carefully. Don't carefully. damage the tarp. Yes, you don't want to... The, the I'm just thinking more what's under the tarp, but yeah. please, go ahead. Yes, one we of might the need well, to pull some leaves away later. One of the wind conditions for this scenario is depends on how you handled the tarp. Um, so <laughs> gingerly, the four of you take a piece of this tarp and peel it back uh, like a layer of an onion and you see a small uh, five-year-old girl hiding in the hay uh, apparently uh, having buried herself uh, entirely. She sees the four of you, especially uh, the sauna atop a bison and, and she just screams. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. She's just crying hysterically. Uh, does anyone have charm or maybe fast talk to try and calm her down? Because now that you know what the enemy is here, you don't want to draw more attention. Uh, I do have charm. Well, you're yeah. a charming guy. Everybody that carries a snake is a known charmer. I have all right, that's close as I can get. All right, yeah, well, that worked well in the courtroom. Your Honor. I, I could sing her a song about how she should not draw more attention to the situation. I'll allow yes. it just to hear the song. I will, oh, no. I will <laughs> accompany you. I will accompany you on Whisper, who also serves as a drum. Okay. <laughs> so I'm just going to be like, this is not the time to do any of this shit. Because <laughs> if you do, we're all going to die. <laughs> <laughs> and then I shake Whisper to rattle. We're not going to hurt you. We got cool animals and they're friends, so just chill, everybody just chill. Everybody just chill. <laughs> Praise be to Orlando. Screw those lunar just, characters. <laughs> Praise be to Orlando. Just exchanges a look with uh, Aranda <laughs> as this is happening. Aranda's just like, don't look at me to sing. I've only got 20 points in it. <laughs> <laughs> What is your sing score of Asana? It was beautiful. 50%. 50%. Wow. 50%. 50, 50 shot of that 50, ridiculous 50 song working. <laughs> I, think, I think Whisper should give her a bonus. I just think. Uh, you know what? Uh, Whisper can give you a 20% bonus because the rattle what? was a nice touch. <laughs> I rolled a 12. Wow. Oh, critical. Oh she God. is mesmerized <laughs> by this song. Perhaps like one would be when staring at a rattling snake. Uh, and she stops her screaming. <sighs> and she says, who are you? Are you here to save me? Yes. Sorry, didn't know you were here, but we found you. We're gonna get you out of here. Where's, where's your family? I do not know. My name is Henetha 
Rastakos is my father, and uh, Thinda, my mother, and uh, Brangdor Bisonbane had told you about uh, Rastakos uh, as being one of the farm owners here. Uh, I, I, she says, I, I, don't, I don't remember much about what happened. Some monster men uh, attacked my family in the middle of the night, breaking down the door and attacking. Uh, as this happened, my mother uh, put me out the window and told me to hide, uh, so I ran to the hay here and buried myself. I've been hiding here for several days under the top watching these these creatures these these giant men gather up residents of our community but i have not seen my parents have, have you seen them please please you must help them you must help our community and at this point all you've seen is blood and the bodies you did find were the bodies of soldiers the bodies of both lunar and sardarite uh-huh. soldiers like maybe they came upon the scene and they were attacked as well, but it doesn't look good for the farmers. How many of these men are there? I, I I've seen dozens. Oh God! <laughs> I, yeah. I think Maracos was like was like, all right, I think we could take him on. And then when the girl says dozens, just sort of deflates a little, <laughs> uh, and you see like the blade glowing like dims a bit. But dozens. Yes. Uh, did they, you get a good look of how they look like? Yes, they are. They are tall, very tall, long bodies with with a, a tail that seems with to this, sting. I brandish the stinger. Don't do that. Don't scare the oh, child. Oh, oh I, I'm sing, sorry. I, sing me that I'm song again. Children. To calm me down. <laughs> word for word. <laughs> I actually <laughs> offer the girl like to to come over, and I offer to like pick her up and hold her. Oh. Yes, thank you. And I, I dig oh. in the pouch and see if I have, if I have any rations. Oh, yes, I'm very hungry. I have not eaten anything but hay and leavings. Oh. They, oh. these animals, they, they, they took all of our livestock, and 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 they brought it. They brought our chickens and our pigs uh, to some place. And then they come back, and the animals are gone. They they tried to take the cows, but they were too uh, too big. But they've took all our other animals, and I, it it sounded like they were feeding it to something. Oh, horrible sounds! <laughs> horrible sounds! The ground would shake. Ew. I I hand. Yeah, that's horrible. I hand the girl some of the kibble I was given for my wolf pelt so she can eat that at least. <laughs> oh, no, this is her road rash. Can someone give her wolf food? Oh, sorry. No, I don't know. the wolf kibble. <laughs> <laughs> I'll wash it down with some rations. Uh, Does anyone have water? So I'm, I'm sure we have one sure. water skin between us. Uh, yeah, yeah, I pull out like a water skin. Uh, I say, um, do you. Do they speak any sort of language that men speak i could only hear them speak to each other it was in a language i did not recognize but i'm only five and i barely speak this language yeah i have to say (laughs) one thing we can all take comfort in is that uh clearly hinetha is reading at a higher grade level because her language skills are great thank you my mother (laughs) taught me well where is she by the way (laughs) have you seen my mother oh what are all these blood stains? <laughs> Don't worry, we'll we'll figure it out, won't we? Yeah. And I turn to the rest of my party. Yeah, you should. Um, she can't come with us, guys. No, it's, it's too dangerous for a child. She needs to be safe somewhere. Yes. We should. I got an idea. Hear me out. They don't want it. They don't want to mess with the cows. The cows are too heavy. So maybe we can just strap her to a cow. Then she's just not worth it, right? Like, why they can't take the cows? Just, why would they? It would just, just cut the rope. Take her. Okay, it's just crazy that's a complication I didn't foresee. Well, she's I'm been sure. hiding out pretty well in this hay. But I think whoever is got, who got here, they've they've got what they came for. It probably must be safer for her to be back inside one of the houses. There is one farm that you haven't checked out yet. Um, to the south when you came in. You guys went to the north, I believe. You haven't checked out the south. Um, but they all have these broken indoors. Mm-hmm. So you don't really know 
what they want. Did, did this farm community just get raided by these hungry scorpion creatures? Like, wrong place, wrong time? And the is soldiers, she describing wrong place, the, wrong time? The men, the tall men she's describing, are, she's describing the scorpion guys, right? Yes, mm-hmm. yes. She okay. reacted to the stinger. Soldiers came, and, and they were taken as well, abducted, brought into the houses. But I have not seen my family. Child, Sound. where did the first attack happen? It was, I believe, a, a, a week ago at night they came. I was in my bed and I heard uh, the door crack open. I thought maybe it, uh, a cow had gotten loose and smashed through our front door. But then my parents came in with a fearful look on their face and my mother pushed me out the window and told me to hide in the hay that she would come for me. And so I stayed. From time to time I would peek when I heard things, but for fear that these creatures would find me, I just stayed silent and ate hay. Mm. Where did you, where did you, you talked about the terrible sounds. Where did you hear them coming from? What direction? I feel like they were all around, but every night it seemed like they were bringing animals and Wait, do you think they were bringing people as well? Oh, no, 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 no. I just, Probably not. Keep telling your story. Yes. <laughs> they bring him to, to, the, to the center road there. You can't lie to kids, man. Let this child have a minute. <laughs> and she, she points in the direction of, like, the, the midway point between all four of the farms, uh, but to the south uh-huh. a little bit. Oh. Um, Interesting. Maybe there's some sort of terrible creature living underneath the town. Undoubtedly. Maybe these scorpion men are trying to appease it or feed it or make it grow stronger. Bah, a thousand curses. Uh, Back to them feeding people. Do you really think they did? Do you think they fed my mother and father to this thing? I'm sure your parents are brave warriors and have have escaped and are, are coming for you. I'm sure of it. We'll we'll find them. And I just yes. kind of like look really nervously <laughs> over at the rest of the party. Uh, child. Yes. I lost my father and my grandfather to battle. I'm so sorry. I know what the pain of loss feels like. I promise you we'll do everything in our power to return your parents to you, but there is a strong chance that they are, uh, that they're not here anymore. Don't say that. Were your father and grandfather fed to a horrible creature? The Lunar Empire, mine, yes! Mine was. <laughs> Yours was? <laughs> Wait, yes. yeah. As a matter of fact. <laughs> Wait, yeah. <laughs> my, dad, well, my dad was, yeah. I'm so sorry Wait. to hear that. <sighs> Perhaps. My, par- my parents are dead, too. Oh. It happens. It happens to all of us at some point. No matter what happens, child, know this. That if your parents have died by the hands of this creature, let that fuel, let that hatred sit inside your heart for the rest of your life and fuel all of your future decisions. No, I, cover, you, I hold, I cover her head. <laughs> and I'm very much just in her face. No, with my it's like, no, don't My mother told child. me not to hate. <laughs> uh, you can use it to augment your future skill, ro- skill checks. <laughs> <laughs> it will help you, child. It will help you. I only have a hatred of 4%. <laughs> well, nurture that hatred. Let it grow inside you. <laughs> Aranda cradles her away from Basana's bloodthirsty I'm teachers. I'm worried about all of you. <laughs> <laughs> As Aranda comes down uh, from her berserker rage, she's the only sensible one in the group. Uh, so, yeah, you're not 100 percent sure here. It doesn't look good for this kid's parents. Um, but they did keep the soldiers alive, so maybe uh, maybe they just poisoned them. Um, but it seems like if there are any other survivors, you haven't seen any unless they're in this final house. But there's this bigger problem of what the Scorpion men are doing here mm-hmm. and the potentiality of another 
creature. Do the stories of like uh, scorpions or monsters feeding people and livestock to bigger monsters ring with any of the cult knowledge I might have in the cult of who mocked, which is the death. Ooh, the death that's an Lord? interesting question. Um, I don't think so. This does seem like an anomaly. Okay. Um, it doesn't ring a bell. Uh, what sort All of right. uh, knowledge checks do you have? Like, where is your? I have cult lore of who mocked. And Hjortling customs, but I don't think that applies. And homeland lore, Sartar. Yeah, no, this, this, it doesn't connect any of those, so it might just be okay. wrong place, wrong time. Okay. Or some okay. other cult that isn't locked, uh, tied into that knowledge. Shall we leave the child here and go south to investigate? Yes. yes, let the child fend for herself. It'll make her strong and brave. No, I mean, back in the hay. She was hiding out fine. I... I'm worried about you. Just, just so you know. <laughs> yeah, me, me too, Vasada. It's... I, really, that happened to your father? I, didn't, I don't think I was aware of that. You want to talk about it? I only usually just talk about it to my therapist. <laughs> you have a, you can afford a therapist in this Bronze Age economy. <laughs> it's it's more of a barter system. But uh, uh, yes, uh, he he was devoured by was it a red dragon, Troy? Sorry, I'm just trying to remember that. That sounds about right. Red right. dragon he was devoured by a red dragon, leaving his soul to never be at peace. I'm so sorry. Let's try to make sure the same thing doesn't happen to this innocent child. Well, better to die gloriously in battle than to die have a straw death. Nor She's a child. child. She's a child. Which is why we leave her here in the hay. <laughs> I give her some more of my rations and a little bit of, and, a, and like a water. I'm like, go, hide. And if no one comes by in three days, run to town. She takes the rations, she takes the wolf kibble, she takes the water, and she goes into the hay, very confused about what to do <laughs> and her uncertain uh, orphan-like future. She gingerly pulls the tarp over her, and you look off into the distance to where she pointed to where these scorpion men came every night, dragging animals and potentially other victims to some site, and it does look like the ground is uneven over there. You head in that direction? Yeah. You head yes. in that direction, walking up the road, you turn off the road, and as you get close, you do see an enormous pit. You walk is it, up to is the it pit fresh, or, or did we miss it? Uh earlier. Well, there were so many holes all over the place. Uh -huh. As you were bandying about, this one could have easily been missed, but now that you knew mm -hmm. exactly where to look, you see amongst the you know, the, the farmland, this huge, huge hole. Is it horse and bison sized? Uh, it is probably twice, maybe even three times the size or more than a horse and bison. Yeah. So I'll step up closely like I'm on Molan slowly 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 but then he just skids down into the uh, hole so top Molan uh, Vasana skids down into the hole uh, it's pretty steep do you have a ride skill or something I similar I do okay. I do have a ride skill Na navigating the uh sort of walls of this pit are going to be tricky. You don't want to cause a cave-in. You also don't want to trip in, break Molon's leg. Yeah. Uh, so give me a give me a ride check. Okay. I rolled a 24 under 70. Perfect. So you uh, nimbly slide down a portion of this and you get... A little ways down, it looks like the pit just keeps going and going and going. But you get about 15 feet down and you see off of this main pit, several other tunnels 
that are the size of that tunnel that you saw uh, when you first came here and also the one in the basement of the temple. So it's this whole underground system. Either these scorpion men lived under here for a long time or this is their means of infiltrating uh, this farm. But by the, by the looks of the number of these tunnels, there must be tons of these things. Now I'll just shout from down. There's a lot of tunnels up here, down here. At that moment, all of you feel the ground rumble. Vasana has to hold on to Molan so as not to be thrown into the deeper pit. Okay. And the ground breaks open in several places around you and <laughs> crawling to the surface are four scorpion men. Okay. Can I, while the ground was shaking, can I have blade sharped and pr- protectioned? <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Let me show you the new map. Oh boy. If you slide over here, I will put Vasana in the pit, falling to her death. <laughs> and the rest of you, still alive, will have to fight. <laughs> Four scorpion men. Now you should be a little bit emboldened, having seen Vasana just impale one of them in one shot. But now it's going to be a one on one battle until you okay. change the odds. And this little girl spoke of seeing dozens of them. Ah, Jesus. So you know that, like, okay, maybe we can hold our own against them, but how many waves of these things are there? Let's jump into it. Let's state our intentions. What does everybody want to do here? Makarios, the days of fleeing are over. We're going to need more. Can you confuse again, or have you used up your spells for the day? Your rune magic points. My rune magic stands untouched. Ah. Makarios, uh, he intends... Is that what you're, you want to know my intentions? Yeah, intentions, yeah. Uh, Makarios intends to cast a spell. Whisper also intends to cast a spell. And... Yeah, I think uh, I can do that from where I'm standing. So that will be the entirety of my turn. Great. Great. And we'll do it the same way where I'll just have Whisper act on its own uh, straight rant. Uh, Vasana, you are not dead. I was just joking. But you are in the pit. Um, and it's going to require a climb roll are... just to get out. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, I guess I'm going to have to climb out of there. Um... I will say this. I would allow you to possibly look for a tunnel that you could crawl through to get back up to the surface rather than climbing up this one if you wanted to try and sneak around to the back of one of these things or Ooh, something. Ooh, yes. It's kind of cool that you're on, Molon, so you can move a little bit faster. I, w- I would allow that. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, all right. Um, Aranda, what are you thinking? I'm going to summon Cult Spirit, which goes on rank 12. I'm nervous. Can you... Yes. Mostly because I don't know what that means, and it sounds very dangerous. Uh, uh, just a little bit. I will explain that if you would like. Uh, yeah, you know what? I want to know before we get to rank 12, what is summoning a cult spirit? Um, it costs one summon range temporal stackable. All cults can do this. The caster deity sends a cult spirit to their aid. Its size depends on the number of room points spent. As a rule, greater deities have more size and types of cult spirits. The summon entity arrives at the end of the round on strike rank 12. The spell may be simultaneously cast with command cult spirit. Summon elemental is a specific example of the spell, but many other variants exist. So I could command, I could summon and command in the same round, basically. Okay. This is great. So it's like, uh, you know, summon monster. Uh, Very smart when you're dealing, you want to outnumber your combatants, and you also don't know how many of these things are left in the village. Okay, great. Uh, what about Veracos? Oh boy, I am going to... I think we're stronger if we stay together, so I'm gonna wait for one of them to come close, uh, but prepare my broadsword to attack on okay. strike rank um, six, because I'm, I'm super buffed. I've got like a thousand different spells happening on my body right now, so I'm ready. Yeah, yeah you need to unleash, because you might be able to, if you hit the right spot, do a one-hit kill as well, and that would really... Uh... Really help you out here, not knowing how many enemies Mm -hmm. you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. All right, let's just jump right into it. Anyone casting any rune magic on strike rank one? 
Okay. Two. Um, well, me, because I'm casting, I'm summoning the spirit. Okay. But so it doesn't show up until rank 12. I see. So you, you, you begin the casting and it will show up uh, at the end of the round and then be able to act, presumably, on its Correct. own thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, great. Uh, all right. Uh, two, three, four, possibly five. Uh, no. Oh, yeah. Okay. Six. That will be Whisper. Okay. And uh, Whisper is going to do the same thing on the uh, southwestern scorpion. Okay. We'll uh, call him Fuddle. Three. Uh, all, right, all right, so you go after three, and you're going to do again a uh, power versus uh, power resistance. Yes, roll. assuming he has the same the same uh, power as the last guy. This gentleman mm-hmm. does. Uh, so you've got to roll a sixty-five or under. All right, twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. Okay, so he will not. He cannot attack anyone until we attack him. So if you want to leave three alone, he's out of the combat for now. Yep. Yep. So you tell everybody, don't go after this guy. He's going to be befuddled for a round. Um, Here's something I don't think we did last round. I'm trying to remember if it comes into effect here. Uh, Tanya, will you cast rune magic? Do you have Mm -hmm. to roll that, the passion? You have to roll, I think, the passion uh, to see if you actually cast it. And then if you, um, as long as you succeed, you're fine. If you crit succeed, you don't spend any rune points. Oh. If you fail, you don't lose the spell, but it doesn't get cast. Okay, so then it would be part of my devotion to Babista Gore because cult spirit. Um, and so I have to get under 60%. Okay. Is there, what, what, which ma- magic Shizen. is this again called? Summon? Summon cult Summon spirit. Cult spirit. Okay. Oh boy, that was. I'm going to not count that because one of the dice fell in my house shoe. It's like just there, and if I step in my shoe, it's going to really hurt. Oh, I failed. I should have kept the other roll that fell in my shoe. Oh, the shoe roll! Shoe roll. Mm. The shoe roll was a success, but barely. Mm. All right, so you go to cast this spell. You go to try and summon this thing, uh, and it doesn't come out. Now, where that only ap- happened on round one, you can change your tactics to do something else. But if you're, for example, your battle axe acts on strike rank six, in this case, it wouldn't be able to act till strike rank seven because you already spent uh, a, uh, your strike rank one trying to cast. Again, I'm playing fast and loose with the rules here, but I want to make sure you get to do stuff each round rather than be like, yeah. oh, I lost my whole round because I couldn't cast something. So the yeah, penalty will, will be that you already tried and failed. It goes up by one. Okay, then I will, I also- on, on strike rank seven, I will attack. Okay, great. Macarios has befuddled uh, the guy to the southwest on that strike was wh- rank. That was Whisper. Let's Whisper. No. I'm sorry. Sorry. Please strike give Whisper six. the respect he deserves. Uh, is anyone acting on six or seven? Yes, my broadsword's at six, but I did cast rune magic and I didn't roll for it. Should I retroactively do that? Um, if it, it was still re- yeah, if it was magic, you should uh, okay. you should roll for it. Okay, that will be both my shield and true sword. I'll do true sword first. So that is my death rune. Uh, yeah, but you know what? I'm roll. saying that you cast these pre-battle. These were your pre-battle yes. buffs, right? Yes. Yeah, so that's yes. fine. Don't even worry about rolling. Oh, rolling okay. On those. Great. Sounds good. Uh, I can okay. Now it is up to seven. Strike rank seven. Yeah. Right. My, my broadsword was six. Okay. Um. My broadsword was six, but none of them moved into range, right? None so of them moved what does into that range. mean? Uh, uh-huh. So you can either wait until they move and then mm. act, uh, or uh-huh. change your strike rank to move up to them. Uh, but then, pretty you know, far, the nearest one yeah. to you is going to be is going to add two to your strike rank if you went for the one to the northwest. Okay, mm. I'll just do that. Then I'll then I'll act on strike rank eight in that case. Okay. And then Aranda, you're kind of in the same position here. Yeah, I will follow Varakos. So then yeah, I would go on nine, this. eight or nine. Okay. All right, then. And then Vasana, what, what, when, when do you want to go here? Because I would say you can attack this one to the, uh, the southeast, moving the same amount of movement speed, but doing it the cool way through a tunnel and up. Oh, okay, so I, then I could, I thought I was using a whole turn to move. Okay. Then um, I will uh, atop Molon, 
will just have him charge and headbutt him. Okay. Uh, headbutt. And then what uh, strike rank does headbutt work on? That is strike rank eight. Eight. All right. So uh, you are two spaces away. So that'll happen on strike rank 10 okay. to get right next to him. Uh, all right. So eight, nine, nine is Veracos. Okay. Yeah. Let's, let's hit this guy. Let's Go after it. him. Okay. That's my broadsword. Uh, I have a lot of buffs. I have a plus 10 to hit on my broadsword, Jeepers. which is all, already a 90. So it's 100% success rate. Um, that's pretty good. Um, if it goes uh, over 100, what you actually do is you subtract what's over from uh, like my attempt to defend or fight back. Um, so you're I at 100, a five. what did you roll? A five, my friend. You rolled a five? I rolled a five. Oh, so you're just gonna mm-hmm. one shot kill this dude. Uh, let's just see how it <laughs> plays out. Uh, a five is with a with a score of 100. A five is just at the cusp of a critical, so it's automatic max damage. Let's see, just for shits and giggles, where you hit this guy. Okay, roll a d20, right? Yep. That is an 18. 18 is uh, for this idiot. I lost my place here. I think it's his thorax. Let me see. Uh, 18. Oh, no, it's his left arm. Okay. And then how much is max damage on the left arm? Well, true sword's active, so that's double dice. Um, And so that means it's 2d8 plus 2 uh, plus 4 plus 2d6. So that's what, like, (laughs) max damage of that. 12 plus what 16 plus 4 that's 20 that's 20 plus 12 that is 30 32, 32. points of damage yeah so you come up with what is this oh, broadsword Jesus. you're using yeah that's my broadsword it's like uh, yeah i run forward Rah! i like brandish my broadsword uh and i say for who mocked and i jump into the sky and i like slash it down on his arm right my, his left arm is that what i hit yeah left arm okay and left it just keeps arm going. And it, Yep, and I just right sever it. I think ah, I splits. Like down the torso, and I split him in half. Ah, uh, and I land, he... and I'm showered in his blood, and I go, Rah! and I like drink up the blood rain. Just like Vasana, another one Vasana's shot kill. Vasana's just that meme where like they turn and they're like. <laughs> yeah, we like. <laughs> yeah, we nod at each other. <laughs> <laughs> huge, huge. All right, so now it goes to strike rank nine and then ten. And uh, so wait, t- Aranda. Yes, Aranda and Vasana both act on ten. Uh, and it goes Makarios. By, and Makarios. Well, I was going to be nine, but then oh, Rocco just like split the thing in half. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, Maybe we can I'm, take on dozens. I'm going to go up to this. Is this the one that Makaria or Whisper charmed or is it the other one? Whisper charmed the one uh, to the southwest. So you're three squares away from the one to the uh, the northeast. The pit is making things difficult for you to get to the okay. one to the uh, southeast. All right. So I'm, I'm trying to go attack this one. Okay. Um, da, 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 da. Let's see if I actually hit anything. Um, I'm going to use my honor passion to augment my attack. Although Huge. it's going to take a lot to for me to fail. If I do one-handed, I have a hundred percent success rate no matter what. That's that's uh, good. That's good to have. Unless you fumble. I did not fumble, but I, my passion did not work out for me. I got over sixty percent. I got like. Okay. 70. So my passion did not work out for me. All right. So the negative that really comes from that is you could no longer invoke that passion for this fight. Okay. Um, but where you didn't critically fail, you don't lose points from that passion that you'll have to work on uh, in later adventures. But that passion is now you have you have no way to invoke honor. Uh, you'll have to fight dishonorably. No. Uh, but now you just me, so. just swing away and see what happens. All right. Um, it is a one. Oh, God. I didn't divide this up. 1d8, 1d4, and this is too much stuff. Um, <laughs> 9, 11. I got 11 points of damage. 11 let's, points of damage? Okay. Yes, let's see uh, where I hit it. Wait, so did you did you roll to hit it, though? Yes. Your I used sword? my battle axe, yeah. And you hit I it. I have okay. a battle axe, yeah. Okay, and then roll a d20 to see where you hit. 14. 
14. If you saw my computer screen right now, you would laugh. I have so many screens open. Uh, 14 oh, is laugh. right in the chest. Nice. Uh, the benefit of that is the chest is a, is a vital area, but he has uh, a lot more hit points in his chest. So how many points of damage did you do? Um, 14. 14. Okay. All right. He is still going to be up, so he'll take a look. Uh, his chest goes to zero. All right. So he still has hit points left, but you have taken his chest to zero, okay. which... Is not good, not surprisingly. Um, damage equals or exceeds location's hit points. Uh, if you bring a chest to zero, the character cannot fight. Bleeding must be stopped by first aid or they will die in ten minutes. So you've actually taken him out of the fight. He can't fight back at this point. Um, oh, nice. So that's so f- that's just as good as, as defeating him. Uh... All right, now Vasana or Macarius. It technically goes by Dex order here, um, but you guys can just decide who goes first. Macarius can go. But no, you go because it will. De- it, uh, okay, <laughs> I, that's I, fine. I suspect it will change the battle if you go first. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Vasana will whisper uh, a command word into Molon's ear, and Molon will just lower his head and give a huff and charge. Towards uh, towards that creature and rolling a 16 under 50 will immediately headbutt and make contact with this creature's I uh, rolled a four. What is that? Um, if it's the same, it says right right leg. Oh, four. You're asking me. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, here's what I'm gonna do. As you come towards to try and headbutt, it tries to fight back. Ooh. Mm. So. Ooh. It is going to attempt to fight back. And this is where things get a little tricky. So basically, it has a uh, sword uh, and it's going to try and deflect the headbutt. Now, if you look at the attack and parry uh, table here, uh, there's a lot of different possibilities uh, of what can happen. So I roll, you rolled a regular success? Uh, a 16 under 50, yeah. It's a regular. Yeah. All right, so now if I roll a regular six, well, let's see what I roll, and then we'll, uh, then we'll talk about it. Um, here we go. Okay, I rolled a regular success as well. So, now looking at the table, normal parry versus normal attack. That's essentially what it is. Attacker rolls normal damage. So you roll your damage, and my weapon, uh, is going in my parrying weapon takes one hit point of damage and then if if the damage is more than my current hp which it well let's see what happens roll, roll okay, your damage so ro- rolling damage Twenty-six points of damage. Cheap. All right. So this is this is huge. So uh, the basically, when fighting back or attempting to parry and whatnot, you're deflecting the damage onto your weapon. But anything that exceeds your weapon's hit point can end up hurting. In this case, his arm. Um, so if it, t- it oh, takes one hit cool. point of damage, if the damage is more than its current HP, now the the weapon hasn't been hurt at all. The weapon I can tell you has twelve hit points of damage. So any excess damage goes to the affected hit location. And so you said. 26? Nora? Yes. 26. Yeah. Alright, so that'd be 14 points of damage goes to his right arm. He has uh, some armor there, but it'll still take the right arm to zero, and then it will bring his hit points down a little bit. But he is still up. So that's the difference between a one, one hit kill and staying in the fight, is him trying to defend himself. Uh, so he's up. And Vasana's right next to him. Macarius, what do you want to do? Okay, Macarius is going to cast uh, Sleep on the scorpion dude that Vasana is fighting. Um, so sleep. Gonna, that, yeah. is, that is smart. Okay, because Aranda has effectively taken uh, the one to the uh, northeast out of the battle, but this one here, uh, you know, is going to be attacking soon. So what is that, a power versus power? It's power versus power. And can I augment that with, uh, with a passion? Absolutely. And just remember, if you fail, that passion is out of the combat. Yes. Uh, I'm going to use my devotion to Chalana Arroy, and my, that's where all my pacifist uh, you know, nature comes from, their mm-hmm. teachings. So I'm going to try to use that to be... Maybe I can, we can win this battle without slaughtering everyone in one hit. Okay. Uh, see if you hit that passion. I have a 70. I rolled a 71. 
Oh. oh. So no oh. enhancement. Uh, See if this Cthulhu, you could burn a luck point, get it down to 70. Unfortunately, not uh, it's not. So you've lost your devotion uh, to, uh, what is it again? Chalana Arroy. Chalana Arroy. Uh, maybe that's enough for you to not be able to take uh, uh, Aranda out of uh, her berserker rage should she choose to go uh, berserk. Maybe. But now you're just r- straight up power versus power. So what's your power? 12. 12 against 7. You've got to roll uh, under a 75. And if you succeed, it will suffer the effects of sleep. I rolled a 94. Oh, a uh, 94! Oh. Chalana Arroy, why have you forsaken me? <laughs> or why have you forsaken Chalana Arroy? Why have I forsaken you? <laughs> I don't... Faith is complicated. This yes. is bad news. All right, so here's what's going to happen. Uh, the one who hasn't acted yet, and again, I apologize for people that really know these rules. I'm, I'm, I'm doing my best to try and navigate a brand new system, but uh, I'm trying to like navigate it fairly on each side. Uh, he is going to uh, slide up to Makarios and do a single attack. He cannot uh, attack me. He can't attack you? He has not been attacked. He is still befuddled thanks to Whisper's spell. I don't... Don't ever correct me in front of the children again. Uh, <laughs> I forgot he was befuddled. All right. Uh, the one next to Vasana, he acts on uh, strike rank 12 because he can do two attacks. His stinger, which uh, acts on strike rank five, I believe. Let me see. Uh, the stinger acts, excuse me, the stinger is uh, strike rank seven. The broadsword acts on strike rank five. Together that gets you 12. And a scorpion man can attack with hand weapon and sting in the same melee round. Let's start with the broadsword. So what do you want to do there, Fasana? Do you want to fight back from a top Molon? Yes. Uh, I would like to, if that parry with... Uh if I have my broadsword out, can I just kind of like shing and just like kind of try to catch yeah. that attack? Let's see what happens. So you roll your broadsword. I roll my uh, my broadsword and okay. we'll see what happens. All right. This is now this is going to be good for you, uh, depending on what you roll, because I failed. So it's a failed attack versus a uh, I actually, rolled a 15 under 90. 15. I got to make sure I didn't. Uh, fumble my parry. I rolled a 92. Ooh. Uh, I've lost my... Sh- oh, wait, here's a... Ni- what I say? 50% 92? No, 98 is fair. Right, great. But you rolled a success. Alright, so this is a... Uh, I think a, that's a special for Vasana. Is it a special? What's your skill in uh, sword, Vasana? Uh, wh- wait, where is that? Broadsword, uh, the skill number you were trying to roll on. Percentage? Under? Uh, yeah. 90. 90. Uh, you are right, Connie. That is a special mm-hmm. parry against a failed attack. So, oh, we're going to have some fun here. The attacker, me, rolls on the fumble table. Ooh. Normally that only happens when you fumble because you rolled a special parry against a failed attack. No, excuse me. I read that wrong. That was a fumbled attack. I lied. Attacker parried or deflected. So... My attack doesn't go through. The defender rolls parrying weapons special damage. You're going to damage it. Attacking oh. weapons HP is reduced by any damage over its current HP. So you roll regular damage and you're going to mess up his sword. Okay. Sorry, I was reading the fumbled attack. I got excited. Happens. Happens to the best of us. It happens a lot to me. So nine points of damage. All right, so his sword is uh, is almost completely useless here. Um but luckily he isn't, and he's gonna attempt to sting you. Now you can try and fight back again. You'll take a 20% uh, penalty where you already uh, fought back and parried, or you can attempt to dodge, which is another thing you can do, which is a higher chance to just avoid getting stung altogether. Um, Is that what you're thinking? Yeah, I'm gonna try to dodge. All right, so you're gonna roll your dodge skill, and then depending on what I uh, roll, you see there's a new table there, dodge table. We'll see what happens. Can I use a passion for that to help uh, dodge? Is that uh, a thing? What are you thinking? Talk, uh, talk me into this. Uh, well, I, I wish I had a passion to like, I really don't want to get hit. Uh, that <laughs> I was invoke 90%. the dodge gods. <laughs> um, I would say because this is, this whole crew was part of the Lunar Empire, yeah? Yeah. 
So can I use? Well, you don't my... know that. You don't oh, know don't. that these scorpion men might be their own thing. I let you use the hatred of Lunar Empire before because you were all fired up okay, from so seeing Ronda decapitate. Use my devotion to Orlanth. Yes, yes. To Cause, cause he will protect like, you. I, I cannot fail my. I, I cannot fail my my god. Yeah, try um, it. All right. And so if this works, wait. you'll be able to carry this passion over. All right, so I rolled a 44 under 80. Great. All right, so you'll get a plus 20% to your dodge roll. Which is great, because my dodge is not that awesome. Um, <laughs> Let's see what happens here. But I uh, made it. I rolled, uh, uh, which I'm so glad I needed that, because my dodge was 22, but that brought it up to uh, 42, and I rolled a 30. All right, so you have a successful so, dodge. Yeah. But it all depends on what I roll for my sting. And I failed my sting! This guy sucks. Uh, all right, so a failed sting, or a failed, a failure versus a normal, the attack misses. Straight up, and that's good, because that's a poison-tipped stinger. Oh, thank you. One, mm -mm. guys befuddled. One is in really bad shape, especially his weapon. One uh, has zero hit points left on his chest, effectively out of the combat, and one is gone. Unfortunately, at that moment, a couple of things happen. Three more scorpion men emerge onto the battlefield. And something else happens. Something, something else quite dark. Another pit forms to the north. Do you guys see that pit or can only I see it? We can see it. I, I see we it. We can see it. <laughs> All right, so it didn't just appear there out of nowhere. Uh, uh, like at that moment, as you see these other scorpions start to converge on the battle, perhaps being called, perhaps hearing this going on, perhaps they were just waiting for a moment to attack. As they're converging on the battlefield, the, the ground starts shaking all around you, feels like an earthquake, and then right next to Varakos, it bursts oh upward and then collapses, showering everyone in dirt. Uh, the dead body of the uh, scorpion man that Varakos just killed as well as all of you and the scorpion men that are converging on the scene. And this causes this cone-like pit to form at the center of which sits a horrifying looking creature. It is a grotesquely bloated, six-legged crab-like horror. Its body filled with a giant three-pointed toothed mouth from which whips a long prehensile tongue. Let me show you on the map what this creature looks like. I had it hidden on the GM screen. Oh, it's not over there. It's right, come here, right in the pit. Uh, there he is. Ah! Ah! Oh, oh, hello. That I is what bursts out of the ground. I don't care for that. No, not a fan. I don't like it. I don't like I don't it. Like it. <laughs> <laughs> right next to Varakos. Varakos, I need you to roll a dex times five roll to see if from the explosion here, you slide into the pit. Okay, or I should I'm say, gonna... if you fall into its mouth. Uh, can I augment it with my, uh, my... Devo Desire not uh, to die? <laughs> yeah, my uh, loyalty to the Humakt temple. I've already augmented with my devotion to Humakt, I think. Um, so I'm just going to be like... Uh, Falling would not be a glorious death for who mocked. And I'm going to try to like dodge this thing opening up if that's you possible. You sold it to me. That's true. Falling would not be a glorious death. <laughs> no, it like, would not. <laughs> so I have to How are they going to sell us on loyalty to whom? No, that would be. I have a passion not... for living. Can, that, can I use <laughs> yeah, that to augment some of my roles? I have a devotion to self-preservation. That's. <laughs> <laughs> did you hit the passion uh, roll? I did. 28 under 60. All right, so you get a 20% bonus here to uh, dex times it. five. What is your okay. dex? 11, so it'd be 55 bumped up to a 75. All right, great chance here okay. to avoid falling in. You you cursed me, Troy. I got a 94. Yes. All right, well, here's the good news. You now start to fall in. 
but you now need to get to a, a straight up dodge roll to see if you avoid going into the mouth. Should you succeed <laughs> on the dodge roll, you'll actually be able to uh, like find purchase on another tunnel that's breaking off into this. Because just like the hole that uh, Vasana uh, jumped into, there are several different tunnels, uh, smaller tunnels for the Scorpion men uh, to go off to. So if you succeed on this dodge roll, you'll land there. You'll actually get a bonus to attack from being at a higher ground vantage point. But okay. if you fail, you'll go right into its mouth. My dodge is a 37, so I'm going to try to augment it, if possible, with my Use, loyalty. Roll over the, roll over the lo- uh, loyalty to Humak. You get that 20% roll. Okay, over. okay. Yeah. Got it, got so it, got 57. it. 57. 57. Come on. Low dice, low dice, baby. It's hungry. That's another five. <laughs> That's a five. Wow. Wow. All right. So that is wow. a, uh, that's probably a critical success. But for this point, here's what it means. You're going to be able to slide down. It, it like goes to grab you in its mouth, chomp, and you land on like a side tunnel. And from this vantage point, you now get a 20% bonus to attack, including any other hey. uh, runes that you try to augment with from just being at a higher vantage point. Now that's great and all, but you don't know what this thing can do. And you're standing right next to it. New round, more combatants. Things are getting sloppy. Things are getting messy. What is everyone's intentions? (sighs) Boy. Yeah. (laughs) That escalated quickly. Yeah, the one right next to Aranda, I'm just going to throw an X on it because it can attack. I'm not, there's other combatants I'd rather focus on right now. So uh, I'm not worried about that. But yeah, this is the battlefield that you need to worry about right now. The one next to Vasana is in bad shape, and it's had its uh, weapon pretty much taken out of the combat, but it still has that stinger. And now you got four more of these things and this awful chaos beast. What do you do? Uh, I'm I'm gonna hit it straight up. I'm gonna try to specifically try to hit the sever the tongue. Would that put me up to strike rank twelve? To focus uh, yeah, on that location. So if you want to aim, uh, do an aim shot. Uh, your options are. Any of its four, uh, six legs or its body. Those are the uh, the five okay. things. So I would say an aim on the body is probably what you want to do. The tongue isn't an option. Um, but okay, then never I'll mind. Look, then never mind. Yeah. I'll keep my higher strike rank then. Yeah, that's probably smart yeah, because yeah. you just want to yeah. do damage to this thing. It, exactly. It's gonna have, yep. It has more hit points than these other guys. Yep. Um, great. And you still have blade sharp active, I'll say. Yes, everything's uh, active. Vasana, are you just going to stand and bang? Well, I'm going to use the remainder of my um, spirit magic points to, or I'm sorry, my rune magic points to cast, no, it is spirit magic, to cast uh, demoralize on that thing that just popped out that I want nothing to do with. Oh, a little demoralize. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, that sounds fine. Um and then um, just keep in mind yes and i don't want to hamstring you here i just want to try and do a tiny bit of justice to these rules i don't know okay i think when you start switching from weapons to magic or vice versa there is a uh, a strike wreck penalty to keep in mind uh okay. i want to say it adds five so all it means is really like for you to switch to rune magic instead of acting on uh strike rank one because you were focusing on weapons it takes you a moment to recenter yourself to focus on this rune magic and so instead of one it would happen on strike rank six okay i believe is that's how that sure. works um makarios the peacemaker makarios is gonna uh he intends to cast a spell and move and whisper intends to cast a spell as well okay and aranda and Mac- you've you've taken this one out of the fight here but uh what are you thinking can I augment the demoralize? Because I can do that too. I don't know if you can augment someone else's spells, um, but you can. Uh, you can also demoralize if you like. I too will demoralize our enemy. Yeah, because Vasana could fail, or one of you could fail. It gives you a, a higher percentage of one of you succeeding. Um, and what is demoralize? It just is it like confused? It takes it out of the combat, or like um, makes it start to cry. Just, so what it does is um, it's you have to roll power versus power, and then it will uh, if you succeed, 
and they ch they will either try to flee or they won't try to attack you. But if they do attack because they can still defend themselves, it'll reduce their attack percentage by half, I believe. Oh, okay. All right, great. Um, so both of you trying to demoralize, focusing your energy on that is probably a smart move. It does leave you open to the attacks from these other uh, scorpion yeah. men that are converging. But you know the risks. Um, all right, I think that's everybody. So let's get to it. Uh, Aranda, you'll have that same penalty that Vasana has. Um, God, I need a rules lawyer just to hang out with me for these these rune quest streams. But I, I feel like it was a plus. It adds five. Does anybody have that uh, table in front of them of strike ranks? Uh, yes, and I was just reading it, and then I lost it. Uh, oh, wait, I think I... Oh, there it... Uh, there it is. Where are you, son is of it a gun? preparing a spell, a weapon sla or spell? Is that what we're talking about? Yes, or a it new is plus spell five. or different weapon plus yeah, five. Yeah, preparing a new spell or weapon uh, plus five. Okay, great. All right, so yeah, that will happen on strike break six. All right. So Troy, my I my entire action cast a spell, and for Macarius, it's going to be a rune spell and move. That would be total strike rank four for me. But the okay. rune spell, I think, is important that it happen on strike rank one, because it could, depending on what you, your guys do, it would matter. So does that, can that, does that work? Like the spell can, the spell happens on one and then my movement happens at the, at the end, or does it all have to happen in, together? You know, part of me thinks it always, it has to happen together. Um, it, like your turn isn't broken up like that. Uh, sure. But I, you know, I'm just not a hundred percent sure. Uh, the reason I'm going to rule it as as that is like it's it's not going to make a, a huge difference to you. It mean might mean that one of these scorpion men gets to go, but you're still going to be able to get to go before most of them. Cool. Uh, okay. or, you know, I'm not sure. My my disclaimer that I'll keep uh, saying to all the RuneQuest purists and to our good friends at Chaosium is we're doing the best we can. Uh, but that's why you got to <laughs> keep playing this game by the starter set and learn it by heart. Uh, but let's get into it here. Uh, so strike rank. Let me see what I want to do here. Because I, you guys are having all the fun while your old buddy Troy's guys are just dying. <laughs> These scorpion men have family. They have scorpion babies to feed. Um, let's see what these these horrible creatures can do. I'm actually really interested in uh, the big guy, too. All right. So they're going to act... No, I want to do the stinger, so that's going to be there. Let me see this guy. Oh, oh, that's bad. No, I'm going <laughs> to really like go that. after. I'm going to really go after Connie. Uh, okay, I can take it. Come at me. Yeah. I have so much armor. It would just be fun if this ever, if I ever pulled this off. So I'll wait. Uh, strike rank one, two, three, four. That's Macarius. Gah, all right, you got me. <laughs> okay, so Macarius is going to cast a rune spell. Okay. Uh, I'm going to cast Harmony. Uh, so basically, do I, have to, I now? All right, I can. This is very Macarius, by the way. I got totally befuddled, but do I have to roll on that? Did Did one of my guys cast befuddle on you? Uh, yes, you have to. Whenever casting a spell, you have to roll for the rune that is connected with that spell. Great. Okay. So I'm. In, this is going to be my uh, for Harmony. I believe it is the Harmony rune. That yes, sounds just, about right. Just the harmony room. I'm so. not an expert, but that sounds about right. Now, here's the thing: if you succeed, you cast it. If you fail, you don't cast it, but you don't lose the spell. If you critically succeed, you don't burn any uh, magic points in this casting. Okay, I have an 85 harmony, and I rolled a 17, which is a special. Ooh, that's a special. You needed the critical though, I needed to critical. not have it cost. Okay, it. but that succeeds. So, what okay, does harmony do? Har harmony is pretty awesome. So I'm only spending one magic point. Okay, uh, but basically. It prevents anyone from becoming violent within three meters of the caster per point spent. So if you want to attack in that space, so three me within three meters of me, mm -hmm. you have to That's roll... That's within one space, by the way. One space around me, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and including me, I'm assuming. Uh, yeah. So you have to roll a power. You have to, it's a power versus power roll, basically. That is a very cool defensive spell. It's, and uh, then I'm going to yeah. move three spaces up to stand next to Varakos, and Varakos is now within the reach of my harmony spell. 
Now, Matthew, here's you the are tricky good. thing. You are good at gaming, my friend. That here's the tricky thing, move. though. I may have that. That also means that Veracos has to roll. Yes. Yeah, you've affected me as well. But I figured to, if I give you one one turn to to get yourself in a good position to get to attack. Yeah, the could sky. I like step out of the <laughs> out yeah, of I your guess, aura and like yeah, yeah. my strike rank by one? There's no That's reason the aura why. There, I right? Yes, exactly. This you way, guys, this, can this you guys thing see that? If I. Uh, mm-hmm. You can see that aura, yeah. All right, so that's mm-hmm. the uh, the effective aura of this harmony uh, spell. Very, very cool. Uh, yeah, so Veracos, you could uh, increase your strike rank by one to to get out of the reach of that. Um, I'll do that. It's Will all that about lower? timing, because right now, if it tries to go after you, it just can't. Or does it? What happens? It's a it's a power versus power roll. It will roll on the resistance. Versus power roll. Okay. Oh, this is great. That was strike rank four. Now it's strike rank five. And I'm gonna have the creature attempt to uh, attack Veracos through okay. this harmony room. Let me just roll a D100 17 times to find out how this works. Uh, <laughs> all right, first I'm gonna roll to, a, well, I guess I should first roll against the, the, the power versus power before I get into like, are you gonna fight back? Are you gonna parry? Are you gonna dodge? Because mm-hmm. that's gonna determine everything. Yeah, um, you can not act violently in that space, so. Let me ask you this, is it, am I the active power? Or I think you would be the active power, right? Because it's your spell? That's a good question. Uh, to act violently in this space requires a resistance roll of the caster's power compared to the resistance table. Yep, all right, so you're, I'm gonna say you're the active one. Okay. Uh, what is your power? My power is 12. Ooh, this one has a power of 18. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, what? All right, so 18 all the way over to 12. You have a 20% chance. Ah! So I roll? You roll. Yeah, you're the one trying to act violently. So wait, I have to roll under 20%? You have to roll under 80, I think. Under 80 if it's 20%. Yeah, so maybe it's the other way around. I'm the active 18 and you're 12, yeah, 80. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot more sense. Uh, So I gotta roll under 80, and if I do, then I see if I roll, and I see if they fight back. Here we go. I rolled a three. Yes! Oh my god. Oh wait, no, you have to roll. We wanted you to roll over 80. Three's good. All all the time, every day. Uh, So this thing gets through your harmony rune, Matthew was still very cool. You should be proud of yourself. And when you go to bed tonight, give yourself a pat on the back. Uh, but now it's going to attempt to bite Veracos. Come at me. I can take it. It just has pure evil in its heart. It does not see harmony. What do you want to do? Do you want to try and fight back? Do you want to try and dodge? Do you want to just try and take it? Yeah. How, do, uh, how does parrying with a shield work as opposed to a sword? I, there is an answer to that question. I think you roll... <laughs> you Do you have a shield skill? I do. Okay. There is a better answer than the one I'm going to give you, but you roll your shield skill as opposed to pairing with your weapon. Um, and okay. then the shield, should I do damage, the shield points will will eat some of that damage, similar to how your armor heats it. Um, but then I think okay. if I roll higher than you, you could still take the damage, but maybe it would all be directed to your, your shield arm. That is my okay. crib notes, fast and dirty rec, uh, recollection of the rules. All right, so okay. you roll and your I'll, shield. I'll parry with my broadsword, actually, because my shield oh. skill is not that great. Oh, uh, okay. Look who changed their tone? All right, great. Yeah. I'm gonna roll. I'm gonna roll my fangs. I would like to augment my fangs with uh, Vasana's uh, dedication to Orlanth. No, I'm just kidding. I can't. Uh, here we go. Oh boy! Come on. Oh, I wish I'd saved uh, the three for this. Do I get any bonuses to that? Like similar to all the bonuses I have for my regular attack or no? Not on uh, parries. Uh, sure. Okay, great. So I'm still on that higher vantage point, right? So that's a 20 plus another 10 from Blade Sharp. I'm at 100 and So the yeah, plus 20% is if you were attacking me, you should get that same uh, bonus. Yeah. So you're going to get a very good okay. chance here defending. I rolled a 16. Okay. I'm just throwing it out there. Okay, I rolled a 61, but that was also, that's a normal success, I think. Okay, let's get down to business here. That is a uh, a normal attack. Uh, I think, yes, yeah, normal. Ooh, I almost had a special. Normal attack versus normal parry. I roll normal damage. 
and okay. your parrying weapon will take one hit point of damage if my damage is more than the current HP. Any excess oh damage okay. goes to the affected hit location. So basically, your think of your uh, your weapon basically the is weapon acting is take as one point armor. Of damage. Yeah, okay. it'll take one hit okay. point of damage, and then it will it will absorb the rest of that. Uh, you know, any damage. It's so complicated, but I do you know what I'm saying? Like it, if you if your sword has 13 hit points, I do 26 points of damage. Uh, only uh-huh. 13 of it is going to get through to your arm, which is then protected by your arm armor as well. Got uh, it. And so, and my my weapon is going to take take one point of damage total. Yeah, right? that's the thing is okay, your weapon it. is only going to take one point of damage, but it's going it. to block. 13 of it or whatever it has. Understood. Yep. Uh, Let's see. It's really cool. Like, this is something that is, uh, you can enjoy with multiple playthroughs when you really figure this out and you don't have to agonize all over the nitty gritty early on. Let me see here what type of damage this is doing. All right. Oh, boy. This is a lot of D6s. Not going to lie. That's okay. Just let me know where it's trying to hit me. Oh. And then there's going to be some other stuff that happens. All right. 6, 12, 13, 14. It's 15 points of damage. So how many hit okay. points does your sword have? 12. 12. All right, so it'll take one hit point of damage. Three will then go to your arm. Does your arm have at least three armor? Uh, my left or my right arm? Uh, are you right-handed? Yes, I am. Okay, so your right arm. Okay, then I also have my protection spell up, which gives me two armor total. So I'm going to direct it. I think it's. I'm going to direct it there. I don't really know if it's like... If it's, like, total armor or, like, if it can be localized. Yeah, can you, like, just choose in the moment to, like, put it there? What does it say in the spell? Yeah, it says each magic point, oh, acts as one armor point to the whole body. So how is that calculated when I'm Oh, you probably, everything goes up one. Everything goes up one. Oh, wow. Okay, great. Then my right arm has seven, and I also have shield two. So I have four points of magical armor on top of that. Okay, now um, your shield is in your left hand if your sword yes. is in your right. So the shield won't yes. count, but however... No, I mean the, I mean the of... rune spell shield too. Uh, oh, is, the rune spell. All right, so you're not going to take I any damage. Her. I tried to fight yeah, I think the so. wrong person. Uh, now, had you failed that fight back, had you failed to dodge, then it's a different story. Um, God, that would have been cool. Okay, uh, that's fine. Fine, fine, Connie. That's how you want to play it. Uh, let's yeah, go to strike. yeah, I think what this means... Is I have like twelve because I originally have six points of armor on my right arm, and with shield, which gives it four because I cast shield two protection, that's another six points of armor. So does shield 12? act like uh, the other thing where it's four points to everything, or is it four points to just your shield? Uh, it just says shield. The rune varies by each point of shield gives the wearer two points of magical armor and two points of counter magic. The effects are cumulative with protection. Wow. All right. So you're, you're super buffed. And it should be. I'm super uh, these buffed. These creatures can yeah. kill you. Uh, look at how quickly you kill these creatures. Uh, so that makes sense. It, it's going to make you very, very hard to hit. And now here's the yes. thing. I'm going to lift up the veil a little bit. Had this thing hit you, uh, its fangs have poison in them, which then you would have to roll against uh, the potency of the poison, which is a con roll versus its con. Uh, and oh boy. then it has the chance to swallow you whole. Uh, <gasps> but because you've got such crazy armor, it didn't get through to you, so those rolls don't even start to happen. Got it. Absolutely huge. For now. Let's go to strike rank six. Anybody have anything at strike rank six? Whisper. But you guys go All first. three of us. Yeah. Okay. Let me know what you want to do. Uh, you can uh, go by dex rank, or you, you all can just choose who wants to go first. Because we're all friends here. Uh, I mean, my dex is 11, if that's the easiest way. My dex is either. 16. Oh. My dex is 14. Looks like it'll be Tanya, Matthew, Nora. All right. I'm going to try to demoralize that thing that just came out of the ground. Ah, uh, yes. All right. So you're going to roll. Is it power versus power? I guess. Yes. yes. Okay. What is your power? That's a good question. I'm trying to figure out where that is. Uh, 14. 14, and uh, as we've established, it's is 18, so you got to roll under a 30. This oh is why it's good that you both chose to cast this, because it's a very small chance that you can pull this off. All right, dice, please don't fail me. Dice, don't fail me now. It's exactly a 30. 
Oh my god, a huge roll. So is it just straight up demoralized? It is demoralized, yeah. yep. Okay, and remind me again uh, what happens. You had said it uh, earlier, Nora. It So it will, it, it won't try, it won't initiate an attack. It will attack to defend itself, like it still will fight, but it, if it can run away, it will. But uh, if it does attack, it attacks at 50% less, uh, 50% more difficulty um, than before. So like if, if it has to roll, if it had to roll uh, 60 and under, now it has to roll 30 and under. Oh, okay. All right. So it's 50% again, not a, like a hard 50. Like yeah, 60, yeah, yeah, yeah. 60 doesn't become 10, it becomes 30. Uh, yeah. Very cool. Okay. All right. Uh, in the interest of fun, I'll, I'll have it do that instead of run away because it's, yeah. uh, it's a pretty massive and it's an intelligent beast as well. Um, but that's, I mean, that's huge because basically now, uh, yeah, that really puts it at a disadvantage. All right. You guys are mopping the floor of this. When I read this, it was like, how? This is a starter adventure. The whole party's gonna die. No, you're you're supremely buffed and uh, ready for a, a combat like this. Um, and now, Nora, if it's up to you. If you want to change what you were gonna do, take a second after, while Macarius is going and change your tactics. I, I kind of still want to cast demoralize on it and lower that percent, uh, lower that even more. That's just rude. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna give you a second to change your mind, Matthew. What do you want to change? <laughs> Okay, Whisper is going to attempt to befuddle one of the new scorpions, the one that just ran in from the north. Okay. So same same old table stats, seven, they have a, a seven power. I'm assuming there's no difference for these. Yep, seven these power, guys. those guys are all standard, yeah. All right, so under a 65. Okay, got it, with a 27. So this guy's the You're making the, the most of this spell. How are you doing on magic points? Oh, you've got uh, a ton of magic points, right? Well, Whisper, you know, Whisper, this is two magic points per casting, so Whisper's down to six of ten. I'm sorry, six of twelve. Wait, six of ten? Six of twelve? Six of twelve. Half, so half yeah, dozen of another? Uh, very cool. Oh, yeah, Whisper's got its own set of magic points. That's really cool. Whis no, I also note that it specifies on my character sheet that Whisper also does not fight. Maybe Whisper has a higher devotion to Toronto or Roy than even Macarius does. You know, this is another thing. I was like, how is he going to do this adventure with this character? And you're, you know, between Harmony and casting Befuddle, you're finding ways to take part in the combat without swinging a sword. Very, very cool. And this is where you see the customization. If there's no classes, how is everybody not exactly the same? You can be a peacemaker or you can be a berserker or a uh, bison wielding person that wants to demoralize my boss twice uh let's go to uh you then uh nora do you want to try and take this <laughs> this yeah. chaos piece out of the combat altogether yeah, we're gonna we're gonna lower that we're gonna we're gonna make that a little more challenging for him to hit us so uh it's we're doing a power roll power roll yeah what's your power i believe it is a 15 yes all right so you have to roll under a 35 Ooh. A Tough sense. roll. Oh. Tanya, you can do it. Just hit it. You can do it. You can do it. Twelve. You gotta <gasps> be kidding me. You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> nope. All right. So, so now it's. So can I just say what what everybody sees here at this moment? Yeah, please explain this. So like everybody at this moment sees kind of like this apparition fade in, and it's this creature's mother. And she's just like, oh, Eugene, you've always been such a disappointment to me. Why can't you be more like your brother? He at least gave me grandchildren. You're never going to amount to anything. And she's there for the duration of the combat, just like very just, oh, just oh, shaking her head. I'm so disappointed in you. I'm demoralized by that. That is, that is demoralizing. <laughs> so it's just like... <laughs> Uh, I mean, you have completely dominated this combat from start to finish, as well as you did the first one. And so I imagine over the next, uh, you know, couple minutes, more and more of these scorpion creatures start to come in. And though you're holding your own between befuddling and straight up chopping up, you've taken out the main uh, boss from this combat in a way that it's never going to be able to recover from. If Varakos had fallen into its mouth, or if the Harmony spell had got through, you know, there's so many things.
things that could have happened that didn't because you're well prepared. But even if you start to feel like you're overwhelmed, at a certain point, you hear a, a bellowing roar and the thudding sound of heavy footsteps. And off in the distance, you look towards that sound while you're in mid-battle. Uh, and you see that giant one-armed troll come barreling towards the battlefield, uh, followed by all the Uz that were imprisoned with you uh, in Johnstown. And Hungry, the giant troll, now one-armed, just dry, dives directly at this uh, demoralized chaos beast and just starts tearing it apart. And if you start to feel overwhelmed by these scorpion men, now you're fighting side by side, back to back with these Uz. And it's only a matter of time that these dozens and dozens, just like the little girl said, of scorpion men are completely defeated. And you win the combat. And when the dust settles, the trolls basically tell you that they saw you heading out of town and they followed you, thinking that perhaps you were uh, going to get into something profitable and that maybe they could help you and join in on the spoils because they still needed money. Um... You all look around at the carnage, and it seems like everyone is taken care of. You don't see any scorpions, like, running off in the distance. Maybe some went into the tunnels, never to be found again, but they know not to mess with Munir's Landing. You go to the last house, and you see that there are a, a few survivors left, but all of the survivors are soldiers. Uh, and the farmers uh, and everyone that lived here in this community, it looks like they've all been slaughtered. And it was the soldiers that came later that put up a fight that were poisoned. And probably it was only a matter of time before they were going to be fed to this uh, chaos beast as well. Um so only the little girl lived. Only the oh, little girl God. remains. We adopt her into our Absolutely. party. Absolutely. <laughs> no, I don't trust you with a child. <laughs> it seems we like Persona is a real mother Again, figure. <laughs> let, it, let that hatred no. grow with inside no. of you. Let it fuel. I'm sure there's an orphanage in town. No. Yeah. We can make her a war. <laughs> leave her at a temple. We're going to leave her at a temple. It's like so, a care of her. Yeah, th you know what? You might be the perfect family uh, for her because you all have differing viewpoints and it's going to make a real well-rounded, uh, psychotic, troubled child. Exactly. She may not want to hang out with us. We don't know what she feels at this moment. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's a good point. But she could have a pet bison and a pet snake, which yes. is not nothing. And a pet horse. Children pet that horse. grow up with pets tend to be more compassionate, so there is hope for little <laughs> Helena or whatever her name is. Uh... The Uz, uh, are, they, they, they ask you basically, can they, seeing that there's this farm situation is done, they ask you, like, can they loot the farms? And now it's dishonorable to do that. You, as warriors and as, as devotees of, of your various deities, know not to do that. But you also know that if you just leave after you heal the Sardarite soldiers, the Sardarite soldiers are just going to loot the farms because it's a lost cause and they're going to devote it to the war effort. So you could just let the Uz take a little bit of money if you want. Or you could be like, no, we got to teach you that's not the honorable way. What do you want to do? Uh, I'm uh, we, we took an arm, so let him yeah. let him have I, it. Yeah. I have been keep, I've been sitting on this piece of information because it's uh, it's a little awkward for Macarios, but uh, because of the role he played in the liberation of Pavis, he actually has, and I swear to God, this is what it's called on my sheet: a war booty. Uh, <laughs> that he shake doesn't, it, shake that war booty, Macarius. Well, he doesn't really know what to do with it because he got it. He earned it, you know, participating in a violent action. So he's been really awkward. He doesn't really know what to do with it. So he will use some of the war booty to pay off the trolls not to loot the town. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> that's nice. You mean and you could have given them money all this time? This and we whole could have time. Oh, my God. Wow. Well, I didn't want to reward their violent actions. We didn't have to take on this job if you were just like, oh, here. Well, it's dishonorable money, man. It's this filthy lucre burning a but hole. But then you would have done a good thing by <laughs> paying them off because the guy who hired them was dead. Uh, you could have just said, hold, friends. I will take care of your debts and give them the money. We can gone and done whatever. I think so we can all agree week. it's ethically complicated. It is, but it's still ethically complicated now, but now it's worse. <laughs> They're saying this whole adventure is Macarius' fault. Yes. Wow. I think at the end of the day, that's what you'll all remember as you go to bed tonight. <laughs> While Macario still pats himself on the back for casting Befuddle. I've got some herb if we want to just cool off a little bit after this hard day. 
You know what? Seriously. I'll take you up on that, Macarius. <laughs> yeah. I will take you up on that. <laughs> so you get high on Macarius stash and maybe drink some of Brangdor Bison Bane's <laughs> wine that he gave you in a road <laughs> cup. When you left Jonestown, the road in, a, uh, <laughs> in a Dunkin' Donuts uh, like styrofoam <laughs> cup, <laughs> just just coffee. It's just coffee. Town gods, and so like true heroes, you do not loot the farms. You let the uh, Sardarite soldiers take what's left to aid the war effort, and you also feel a sense of justice and and uh, giving something to the trolls. Maybe they'll return to the Shadow Plateau, or maybe they'll join you, and you've got some new allies in wherever your uh, journeys will take you. You know that the City Rex will be quite pleased, and perhaps this will lead to uh, employment in the City Guard, a, a home, a, a promising future here 401K. in Dragon Pass. A 401k. <laughs> maybe some <laughs> benefits. Dental plan. <laughs> dental plan. I need some braces. And I'll take it. Either way. 401k or not, the war with the Lunar Empire is far from over, and you can't help but wonder, while stoned out of your mind and drunk on wine, what your place will be in the battles to come. But that is an adventure for another time. And thus ends our journey into RuneQuest. Hey. It's a good game. It's a solid. You did it, Troy. We did it. We did uh, it. You did it. I'm, I, I can only imagine my inbox is full, filling up with, with hate mail about all the rules we did wrong. But that's the thing you got to remember <laughs> with RPGs. Like, your other option is to never play them. And that doesn't seem fun. Maybe stumble through, do your best, learn from your mistakes. We have the benefit of like, I can't even tell you. I'm going to go back and read this chat because I'm actually interested in all the things we got wrong uh, and the emails that we'll get. And that's how you learn. And I, I think that uh, if you really enjoyed this, give it a shot. Get on that mailing list to get the starter set when it comes out. Or if you're ready to just dive right in, uh, Chaosium, everything they put out is awesome. So please grab uh, grab the uh, core rule book and start playing playing and uh, invite us to one of your games. Maybe we'll stop by with our amazing grasp on the rules. Uh, in the meantime, <laughs> I want to thank all of our guests, Connie Chang, Tanya DePass, Nori Ibrahim, Matthew Capitacasa, old mustachy burger on the ones and twos. Uh, once again, remind us where we can see all of your wonderful faces because it has just been a joy to have uh, this this great group together playing a, a game that I was frankly pretty nervous about because I was a little little intimidated by it. Connie, where, where can we find you again? Yeah, absolutely. I'm Connie, pronouns they, he, and she. I have been Varakos Wolf Killer, everyone's favorite gruff talking wolf killing dude. Uh, this never came up, but I just want people to know that I have absolutely been headcanoning him as a trans guy. His shortness, I was gonna like have a Ooh. moment where he like took off his bronze breastplate to reveal like top surgery scars that he definitely gave himself. Uh, so. We know that that's now canon in my brain. You should have told me uh, I would have set you up for this big reveal at the end. Maybe like like in the epilogue, we see like him like like taking a bath, right? Like maybe like with like Roach and like uh, Molon and the other like steeds nearby in this river, and then like he turns around and like bathes himself, and then we see his chest. It's um, a great that's epilogue. It. Yes, exactly. Um, uh, you can find me doing stuff Saturdays at 3 p.m. U.S. Central Time on Twitch at Trans Planer RPG. Uh, I run an all transgender people of color led 100% homebrew Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition live streamed actual play campaign set in an original non colonial anti orientalist world. If that's interesting to you, tune in Saturdays. If you can't watch streams but can listen to podcasts, we podcast uh, every Tuesday. Uh, so wherever you pod your casts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Podbean, give Podbean some love. Podbean is underappreciated, I think. Don't forget I just searched Transplaner RPG. Put some love on the bean. Um, <laughs> and yeah, that's what I do. You can find me on other social media sites at by Connie Chang. That's B-Y-C-O-N-N-I-E-C-H-A-N-G. Uh, it's been a total pleasure to play here on Glass Cannon uh, with with freaking RuneQuest. What a crunchy system, but I've really enjoyed it, actually. Um, especially loving like the passion, augmenting skills, etc. Real cool system that I might have to poach for one of the games I designed down the line. With that, I will pass along out introductions to someone else tanya tanya where, where 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 can we find you got a million things going i could do a two-hour stream where you just tell us what you're, what you're doing. <laughs> um let's see you can find me on uh, wednesday is my twist channel for into the motherlands which is an afrofuturist sci-fi adventure um every wednesday and you can either watch us live catch twitch vod 
or also catch podcast version, which releases on Friday or Saturday, all major uh, podcast places, including iHeartRadio, which I forgot iHeartRadio was there, which sounds terrible. <laughs> but then I remembered I could listen to WGCI, which I grew up listening on iHeartRadio. Um, <laughs> Thursdays, I'm with Nora on Black Dice Society, where I am Fen, a draw down pure blood hunter, with a little bit of beast in her. And on Sundays, starting October 3rd, you can hang out with us on Rivals Waterdeep. Our 11th season starts with co-DMs Brian and Eugenio. I am both terrified and exciting to see what they do. And then on my channel, I stream sometimes on occasion. Uh, I'll be diving into Deathloop and a bunch of other fun games. Awesome. Awesome. And Nora, what about you? Uh, hey, everyone. Uh, thanks for having me on. This has been so much fun playing this very chonky game. I would not. Uh, uh, this is always very enjoyable, and I'm so glad I got to experience it uh, on Glass Cannon with y'all. Uh, you can find me at Neurological on all the social medias uh, where you can have more up-to-date uh, things on what I'm doing that particular day. But you can find me on Mondays uh, streaming our Curse of Strahd campaign Into the Mist on Monday nights um, where I play as Davenir as a PC, which is really cool. Um, on Thursdays, you can catch me uh, along with Tanya on Black Dice Society on D&D's channel where I play a reborn fallen Azamar undead warlock with a little bit of College of the ba uh, Spirit Bard, um, which is really fun. And then on Saturdays on Pixel Circus, I play Princess Jasmine in an all-princess D&D campaign. It is super chaotic, super fun. Um, she is also a, uh, she is a genie warlock with a little bit of a sorcerer as well. Um, super fun times. Uh, follow me on stuff and all the things. And that's all I got to say. My, my brain is always, I hate doing outros because of my, my, I like can't talk anymore. I can't remember anything I'm doing. Yeah, no, that's, that's how I feel. Don't forget. You can also see Nora on Wicked Empire on yes! the Glass Cannon Network. <laughs> that was announced. That's yeah, a thing. It's, it's happening. Uh, yes, yeah, I'm we so got, we have so much going on. I can't even keep track of it. Uh, Matthew and Grant speak e exactly the same time about everything you're doing. I uh, want to just say, say it's time it's to give time to go. Uh, shout out, shout out to my wife's group. Yeah, that's turning into a real thing. <laughs> yeah, Check out that group. Turn. <laughs> AZN Pop Comedy, AZNPopComedy.com, recently written up by the Today Show website with the headline, Meet the Asian Girl Group, who is dismantling stereotypes with satire. They're very funny. Go check them out. Good, good, uh, good plug there. Matthew, what do you, what do you want to plug something? Uh, you want to plug your wife's work? Yeah, you can go check out my. You can go check out plays again. Apparently, you can check out theater at New York Theater Workshop oh. at, in uh, in the East Village. They've got shows running. I haven't seen it yet, but I'm very excited. And you can find me on Instagram at uh, Who Is Matt Anyway. Thank you for that. And uh, unfortunately, we run out of time for me. But uh, <laughs> this has been New Game Who <laughs> Dis playing RuneQuest. Thank you for watching. Be sure to tune in next week for Twilight 2000 for your old buddy Troy and the whole gang. Have a good night! I'm waving at no one. <laughs>